<laughs> hey, can we do the butt implant story before we get out of here? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what was that? It's a butt implant. Oh, oh those stupid women! What are they doing to their bodies? It's Dude, you know what? Yeah. You know who this is. Stop it! Oh, this I gotta tell you, this isn't just the, the woman on on fucking uh, Park Avenue. You think it's the Hoochie it's Mamas? I think it's Hoochie Mamas trying to get a a quick fucking uh, butt job. Let's break it down. You don't think white women are getting the butt implants? In? Well, the guy's putting silicone caulk from uh, the hardware store in there. Don't the white women have the flatter butts? So yeah. why wouldn't they be the ones getting the implants? That and Asians, I would guess. Asians should do it. Asians. Well, yeah, maybe. Hey, uh, I was in uh, working the improv in Irvine, which is Orange County. That Irvine. whole that whole thing, that the Real Housewives of the OC, is no joke. Yeah, dude, I never saw like plastic surgery. I did, and oh, I'm telling you something, oh, man. Ugh. Why they, does it look they, so they, bad? Dude, these, there was like a group of four or five older women came up to me. My eyes were watering. <laughs> I, was, I was talking about it the next night on stage. It looked like they, they, they looked like they were battered wives, but it was like a symmetrical beatdown <laughs> because both sides were like like equally <laughs> swollen. So I was thinking, because like it wasn't a southpaw. The guy wasn't right hand. It was more like that rock'em, sock'em yeah. kind left of punching. Left, right, left, right. Yeah, left, it was right. like. Equal, equidistance, but they, oh my god. I don't get it. And they saunter up. And they like think they look still good. sexy. They like dress they're like they're 18. Sexy. Yeah, oh. yeah. And it's just a disaster. I guess, so, the, I guess the problem is they just go too far. I hear if you get just a little little something something and this stop. Is, you, this but is, the this problem is it's addicting and they keep going until it looks horrendous. This is what the problem is. Is, yeah. is doctors practice medicine. <laughs> they're practicing. That's what it means. And they're basically they're practicing on your face. <laughs> got an answer for everything. They're really you know what? How, how could you argue that point? But if you have enough money, let the, whatever Demi Morris haven't done, she looks fucking younger than she did she looked a little, a little rough at the oscars did and I, she? Think, I think she took her implants out i noticed yeah yeah her tits did didn't she? look as oh, big yeah man unless she had them like battened down you know that can't be good when they take them out that can't it's like gotta look like a deflated balloon or Not something sure they, they, they you think it snaps sure back they, they, they tighten them up yeah she, she used that, that big wow, she, she went there, from having Danny. a cups Jesus. back in the uh, general hospital days mm-hmm to uh, having big giant titties in uh, like the strip uh, what tease was it, strip movie, tease? yeah, and now she's got like regular little, fucking titties, um, little bees maybe, little, yeah, little bees happening. I like she A B cups. She does. Uh, you like A's and B's? Yeah, C's are fine too, but I don't like them unnatural. I like real tits. No, they oh, gotta yeah, be real. Yeah, 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 you know, I like one A and one D. That implant D. shit is way overrated. Like, you don't, you don't, you don't like those boob implants <laughs> from the nineties? <90s? laughs> oh, with oh, the God. big blue veins on the side. Fucking, we've seen enough of them over the years. They look good in sweaters, but they take that sweater off. It's ridiculous. And they're fucking breastbone. It looks like if you hit it with your fingernail, it would rip like cellophane. <laughs> stretch too tight. I'm a fan of the off. ball wrink, uh, the, the bag wrinkle. I was ready to say ball. Oh, wrinkle. the bag the wrinkle. The bag wrinkle on the side oh, when they, yeah. they lift their arm up, or when and they lean when they're leaning over, and you just see like bag wrinkle. Sometimes oh, you see the like serial number of the freaking bag through <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the skin coming through because <laughs> they went too big. Remember the booba lantern? Oh, I love that girl with implants. Turn the lights off, put two flashlights underneath their tits. They lit up like fucking jack-o'-lanterns. Like complete, and natural boobs won't do that. But these fucking, the silicone inside uh. there, or the, the saline, l just glowed. And you could see these big, giant, Monroe, glowing tits. Monroe, <laughs> it glowed, Monroe. <laughs> okay, Pookie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the butt he implant. Whatever happened uh, to Jim J. Bullock? Uh, oh, 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 please. Who gives a shit about that a fucking asshole. broth of poodle. Yeah. And uh, not... Oh, that can't be real. Come on. What? Uh, no way. A boob job? Look at that. Where Look the at nipples where the nipples are. Where are the nipples? On the, that's, get the fuck nah, out of here. that's not that's real. Photoshop. That's Photoshop. One's what pointing stomach. this way, one's pointing the other way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And the other belly button's like, hey, what do you want from me? Yeah, thank you for finishing my stupid joke, Bill. Thank you. Ugly, Thanks for humoring me. Ugly breast implants. That's that's oh, wonderful. Good. Oh, is there uh, a website called Danny, Ugly Breast Implants? You can just go to Google. Oh, you just Google it. Oh, Google, Google, Google it. Google it. Google it. Oh, God. Whoa. One's going one way, one's going the wow. other. Oh, I love the one big areola drooping down. One was left out in the sun too long. Wow. That'll happen. That was like uh, uh, The Apprentice did the one on the right. <laughs> left, the left one looks perfect. <laughs> left, yeah. All right, and now you. You got it? Yeah, I can All do right. this. I showed you how to do it. Now I'm going to be leaving. I got an appointment to get. Yeah.
That's funny. <laughs> they practice medicine. Hey, uh, butt oh. implants. So there's a problem going on in Jersey with butt implants. Butt implant surgeries are on the rise, with women and men adding a little lift to lift their spirits about their backside. In the past 10 years, the number chick. of derriere enhancements has gone up nearly 150%. But several New Jersey women learned firsthand what happens when you don't do your homework first. I was outraged when I heard that this happened because it is completely yeah. unethical. These guys are purchasing really? these silicone products probably from a hardware store, really? mixing really? them with something to make store. it a liquid form and injecting it into patients. Six women from Essex County, New Jersey, <laughs> were hospitalized after getting an infection from quack doctors who are apparently unlicensed and used non-FDA approved silicone that was diluted with the same substance <laughs> used for caulking a bathtub. <laughs> you Sir, you're right, you dumb. Nope. They just fucking clicked a few, yeah. clicked a few fucking trigger fuck? pulls of uh, silicone wow. into their asses. You need your ass to look that good. And, and how does it feel when you sit down? I saw a girl at the gym because it just be her wrong. ass, the fake ass. You, you've seen ridiculous. fake asses? I yeah, don't think I've ever what, seen a fake when ass. When a girl He's has in an, fucking California. When a girl ass, has so, an yeah. ass, she has thighs too because you got to have like a foundation right, to right. support it. And this girl got like it looked, it Ugh. looked ridiculous. And yeah, because unless the leg tapers into the bottom of the ass very nicely, they it's haven't, look they silly. haven't figured them out yet. Not they are really. practicing uh, on people's asses right now in Jersey. Oh. Yeah, and then they, they'll bring they, the surgery to California yeah, and then she, it's perfected out there. Was she on the treadmill jogging and you're just watching her ankles get fatter as the silicone no, this is the drips she, down her legs? She was <laughs> strutting around the gym because obviously it was such a big, you know, such a. Uh, uh, like a part of insecurity for her that now that she had it, she's just wearing the tightest. And you, you looked because it was so bizarre. Why yeah, that's how look. They're big in Brazil. They do that in Brazil a lot. The trannies Why? do it because it's just a big tranny culture. Oh, the culture. trannies do it? And, and women do it too, that, but... Jimmy. I, yes. <laughs> people send links. Oh, well. Jimmy's that's, got silicone on his fingers. Yeah. Well, I don't, <laughs> don't have any on my, from. my balls or my face. <laughs> can, can I see a good butt implant pick? I don't think they oh, have it possible? Possible? I don't think, I think Bill's no? right. They don't have it down yet. All right, here's part two of the Jersey story. Lenox Hill <laughs> Hospital doctor, Carrie Peterson, says if these women didn't get treated immediately for their resulting abscesses, the infections mm. could have been lethal. Acid Almost like fit. giant pimples. They're big balls of pus. Uh, what? And they had to be operated mm. on because these balls of pus had to be sliced open and essentially drained. Yum. But if left untreated, they can continue to grow and grow, spread to the surrounding tissue, and eventually seep into the bloodstream and cause, yes, septic shock. These are women who are looking to look more beautiful and are using any means they can to get there. They may not necessarily be able to afford the prices that well-known plastic surgeons uh, charge. So uh, they're looking for alternative yeah, means thanks. and there's going to be someone there that's going to prey on them for that. If you get your surgery in somebody's garage, you can't expect <laughs> it to go well. Uh, Fucking dopey broads. How bad do you need to save money? How about you not do the uh, freaking butt implant? The ass implant is where hair plugs were in like 1978. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they didn't quite have it have it worked out. <laughs> yeah, People would just stare at your forehead. Now they're just staring at that weird looking ass. <laughs> they look like ham hocks. They're really creepy looking. That's a awful. bad ass implant, <laughs> and they're very obvious. What about that story? Yeah. Uh, was it Chinatown? Some woman wanted to save money on her dentistry, so she went to a guy that was just kind of picked it up as a hobby. It was. And she ends up dying, so he just puts her out outside near the curb. Yep. <laughs> yeah, just at the end of the day. Did he at least put her in a toxic waste bag? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, doctor. Yeah, I would like some cock in my ass. <laughs> Could you put some cock in my ass? It's old school lingo. That old gag. Linger, linger. linger. Yeah. Fucking 10 years. 10, best, 10, best 15 years. Best, 15 years. best 15 boob jobs years. I've seen around the country are uh, Dallas. Dallas, they every other down. girl they, has a and has they implants. And they, yeah. they got the teardrop shape down. After fucking them up Dallas around is, the country. They, <laughs> I love Dallas. Every girl has implants and, and uh, a gun. Yeah. They're good? Dude, and the, and yeah. the amount of guys... Most of, most of the girls keep their guns in, the, uh, in their glove compartments because it doesn't go with their outfit, but they have them. Yeah, and they got a lot of guys there with like facelifts, which is just really, really? bizarre. Yeah. And that in Orange County, same thing. You'd see those guys with... Uh, it's just ridiculous. You know who's fucking uh, that country star with the Kenny Rogers there? Uh, oh, what did he do? He looks like a complete. What did he person. do to himself? Did he get a facelift? Oh he my got, god! Like well, you it, can't, it's not you don't even even a facelift. Him. A facelift to me would be if you there you go. Second picture. Pull back your good. face a little to get some wrinkles. Out. He no, like well, there was a split screen. That's he all. did yeah. something 
Wow. He looks like he committed a murder, and he's, he's trying to like he's in the witness protection <laughs> he's program. In a skip town, he's on the lamb. Which one's the original? Really? On the left. To the left. Yeah, yeah, where he and still to looks. And to the right, he's got. He looks more bizarre. Worse, like that's a. Yeah, that, I've seen worse pictures. That's of like the one a glamour right. shot of him. I've seen the worse than uh, the one on the right. He, How old is Cameron? He looks the same as he did in 1978. Well, well that's wow. what will happen if you get the facelifts and shit. But, but but then they don't stop. It they doesn't look going. right. Like that that picture is taken at the perfect angle. Yeah. Then you get the Botox. So you have that laminated, shiny looking face. <laughs> yeah, Can we find a better one. I'm telling you, I want to see a, a horrible shot of Danny. Is it true it's that really uh, Ice T's wife has the ass implants, or is that natural shit? Coco. Coco. I don't think it's. I don't. I don't know much about her, but uh, there's no way those mm -hmm. things are real. I can't mm -hmm. imagine okay. for a, for a white woman. No way. You got to know. No man. way. No way, no, no how. No way, no how. Not my chair, Drinking not out my cups. problem. Miss Balloon ass. <laughs> I think Bill turned us on yeah. to that. Yep. Oh, originally. yeah. Fucking Bill, one of the best things ever. I could still fucking watch that and laugh. Oh, it's yeah. just, Where it's so it? fucking funny. That guy trying funny. to talk himself out of freaking out is a grace. <laughs> Dude, yeah, whatever. Yeah, to... right. I bet yeah, have fist. I bet have fatalist. Fatalist. Had our school had a little kid in the background fucking going crazy. <laughs> Not me. No way. Not once. Not never. No never. way. No way. What is this garbage? garbage. What is this garbage? What is this garbage? garbage? What's wrong with her ass? Like, what's going on there? Well, a lot of people she has think, a lot of it. It's like she's a got... A lot of people, including Danny, think that's like the hottest thing ever. But it comes up Danny and over and her especially. hips. Like, her ass is going onto her sides. It looks like her ass is eating her. Are you sure that's not that's real? That's probably about, like, the absolute maximum I would allow. Really? Yeah, that's a lot Maximum of meat. Maximum pressure? That's a lot of meat down there. Who's that? That's nice, that's juicy. That's Coco. Yeah, that's Ice Tea's uh, wife. wife. Yeah. Oh, oh let's see. Yeah. Okay. That's wow. a nice rump. Wait. Well, then he would Where's like the, the you know. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like it goes <laughs> with the legs. Yeah, that's the thing, though. Yeah, she's it's squatting. Flo flo no, something. it flows into the legs. It's that other girl there where she had... I think had that's natural. It may be natural, those, yeah. Uh, she may have a huge ass. She's a big ass. Audrey Hepburn legs with a... Karen Carpenter legs. <laughs> Jesus. Like the chickens that fall down because their legs can't support their uh, breast meat. Uh, I know. I, I realized. You, you I, had, a, uh, you had to take the punishment. I was fucking trying to tie in the whole show in one dumb line. Why didn't you, what you, I didn't hear what you said. It's okay, Jimmy. I knew. I, was, I think I was going for more factual than a joke. What, what did you say? I don't remember now. Oh. <laughs> Listen Jimmy to the replay. The, oh, you know, I didn't hear it either. Right? Opie, Opie, say it again. No, I, I didn't hear it. Come Jimmy on. Jimmy is the pro of that. No, what'd you say? I didn't hear it. What? What? <laughs> Dr. Steve's on the line about butt implants, though. Oh! Dr. Steve. Yes, I'm Dr. Steve. I specialize in putting cock in asses. <laughs> See, Come on down for a two-for-one special of my own special injection. <laughs> it's good. Say special twice. Special, special. Yeah, stupid. In special. A two-for-one special. It's a special injection. <laughs> special. special, period, comma. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, God damn, man. Yeah. Uh, that's where Dr. Steve gets his wine from drained pus, ass pus. <laughs> Ugh, yeah, he, yeah, he raids the fucking the hazard bags outside of fucking <laughs> plastic surgery offices. Goes right into the dumpster, does he? Yeah, and, and he fucking like he fucking he takes a rolling pin over the <laughs> discarded ass cheeks and squeezes out some juice. Yeah, and he fucking plays Italian music and thinks he's cultured. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what horrible a, fucking venom piss what wine. A, what a what a cunt. <laughs> what a what a God. vile beverage. It's, it's not bad you keep it around the house to fucking drink and start your lawnmower, <laughs> but the fact that you would send that to people around a holiday and expect good cheer in return. Right. And just because you put a fancy label on the bottle doesn't oh, mean we don't know shit. what the fuck's exactly. going on inside the, the bottle. The nerve of you to put a fucking bow yeah. on that fucking Molotov cocktail. <laughs> you know how many times I've reached for his bottle of shit thinking it's a real bottle of wine because that damn label he put yeah, on it? Yeah. You got one too, right? Oh yeah, it's in my wine, uh, my little wine cellar oh, area. He, he made and it's a bottle the only of bottle oh, yeah, he that made sits there. Yeah, and the labeling is amazing. You think you're in Napa Valley? Uh, you're ready to try out some did real he nice stop cabaret. Stop on the grapes barefoot. <laughs> cabaret, cabernet. Was, Jesus, it was next to the sterno, and the sterno's gone. Yeah, yeah. that fucking that wine should be thrown into the back of a car in a Bronx tail. Fucking drained zits. <laughs> Have liquid zits. <laughs> this is a weird. Fucking like yeah. horrible. <laughs> hey, is this snatch story true where the woman crashed her car? 
I saw it on Twitter, right, and right, now I, it's a news story. Wait, is this yeah. real? I don't know Hold if it's on, real. I'm finding it, man. I would say yes. Only really? crashed your car, probably. I'm just Let saying yes. Let me see. Uh, where is it? I, did, uh, I saw hockey shit. playing bears. What, what else is, is going to throw me Oh, today? yeah. Uh, the PC police are at it again. I may not be an Irish girl, but I drink like one. You're not going to uh, be seeing yeah. those shirts. Yeah, somebody got upset yeah. at those shirts. Let's see. Um, <laughs> And then they tried to have them pulled from one of the stores, but the stores were sold out of the shirts. That's hilarious. It's like, you know, people obviously enjoy the shirts. Wait a minute. After customer... Yeah, some, some stereotypes, you, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what... Irish broad, who cares? Can you have, fucking... like, uh, I'm not, not Asian, but I drive like one? Yeah, that's funny. No, nah, that, that, would, that, would, that, would that would be considered offensive. But there's something about drinking Irish is just funny. But that wouldn't be... Like, I, I would look at it, I'm not Asian, but I drive like one, and think that was funny. Like, who cares? Oh, Dude, Christ. Let me, hold on, hold on. Let me read this. Because this is uh, something we fucking hate. Drives us all nuts. So the store yanks the shirts. I, I my made contract? My... <laughs> <Yeah>. No kidding. <laughs> <We're>... Intelligent women? <laughs> <laughs> I may not be an Irish girl, but I drink like one. Okay. After customer complaints, the retail chain, uh, you know, yanked the shirts. I was so livid, said Jacqueline Quinn, a 45-year-old fashion hey, designer from Quinn. Queens who spotted the shirt at a store. It's a teenage family store. I shopped there with my niece and my nine-year-old daughter. So? So what? Exactly. Quinn said she's uh, she, she's able... Oh, you got to love this line. Ready? She's able to take a joke, but the shirt struck a nerve. Then, oh. you, you, then you can't take a joke. She was so upset she had to go home and drink half a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> or that she showed a photo of her toddler who'd been run down by a drunk driver. <laughs> oh, oh, that shit. makes sense. You know, all right, I understand that. Oh. Why are they listening to this bitch? I don't know. It takes a stereotype, and it's uh, basically saying that all Irish people drink, she said. It's always related to alcohol. Why can't they quote Oscar Wilde? Wild. Why can't it be something positive? Because that's boring what? and not fun. Exactly, you dumb hole. It's hard you to fit the humor? potato famine into a t-shirt. I yeah. might not be Irish, but I write like one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. I don't get it. What? Wow. It's not accurate. You get it? It's an Oscar Wilde. Or just, no, forget it. I may not be Irish, but I shit in people's mouths. <laughs> That'd be a great one. It has nothing to do with ethnicity. <laughs> I may not be Irish, hey. but my food really sucks. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I made that joke, and I realized halfway through it, I don't even know who Oscar Wilde is. See? I know the name. I'm like, a, no, who Jack is, Daniels is. is. I threw yeah. it out. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> is that an actor? <laughs> yeah. No, he wrote a quote or something. He was in prison. He did a quote. I, I can't remember. Oh. It said, uh, my love is such that uh, I dare not speak its name. It's true. Old school. Oh, I thought you were going with the. I thought you were going to. Wait a minute. I, uh, Jimmy's on. I don't care if it's true hold or not. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on, let's work with this. No, is Rodney. He acting? I don't no, know. no, I, Rod, oh, that is Oscar Wilde. No, Rodney Dangerfield's love interest in old school was quoting Oscar Wilde, right? Anyone? When Oscar no. Wilde, I think, so. I think so too. When Oscar I Wilde was, was in, I think it was that quote uh, said correctly. <laughs> when Oscar Wilde was in prison, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I did a little time, so it's probably why I relate to him. <laughs> he he actually wrote, uh, "My love is such that it dare not speak its name." And my problem is that my love. Doesn't have a name. Ooh. Oh. So what do you do? Oh, oh. That's just lines I have to do today. Yeah, I thought so. It was. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. See, he's good. Damn it. I'm not Irish, but I have a small cock. <laughs> um, <laughs> I may not be black, but I have a bad credit rating. <laughs> oh. Uh. There's plenty. See? But more importantly, and thank you, uh, Vincent uh, Rochester. Looks like today. Uh, I think you're right. Oscar Wilde was a, a, a raving drunk, right? I think he might have even... Uh, 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 oh, yes. that would be hilarious. I think he might have died of alcoholism, even. <laughs> <Did> no. <laughs> he, he, like cirrhosis or something What do you got, like Kev, that? on this? He, he died, I think it was an, uh, an an ear infection or something that got that he got in prison. And uh, he was actually thrown in prison for being gay. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. That was, uh, he actually... Uh, <laughs> the old Marquis of Queensberry rules. The actual yeah. Marquis of Queensberry, uh, he was actually... Uh, uh, his son was lovers with uh, son. with uh, Oscar Wilde. So that's the new shirt. I may not be Irish, but I take it in the shitter like one. <laughs> if that's what she wants. <laughs> All right. Well, he finishes yeah. in my ear. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll, we'll play it your way. I may not be Irish, but I'll right. fuck a glory hole like one. Right. There you go. Whatever you want, lady. <laughs> Whatever you need. Whatever makes you and your shitty niece and fucking kid happy. <laughs> At home. I hate when they say where they bring their children. I, I, think, I yeah, shop. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Really? We're living on this planet too. Can we, like, Ant brought up to a, brought to our attention a long time ago. Uh, adult entertainment. A We're shirt. here too. But yeah. the store, not problem. everything has to be uh, a shirt in a store. Children. Where my children come to play with their toys? Yeah, I swear to God, Mike, I didn't know it was gonna be ethnic. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that's that to me is that to me is the store's fault. They should have said, "Well, we're sorry you feel that way." Well, Please. you know what? Yeah. But, but uh, there's Please some, go. It ends with this. Uh, there's a strawberry store on 34th Street in Midtown. And a sales rep said the T-shirts weren't there because they're probably sold out. Sold out because people are buying the goddamn so, things. So good. Maybe we can fight people this don't a little like bit. don't like them. All right, here it is. Woman crashes car while shaving bikini area. Mm. Saw this on Twitter, and now it's a real story. So I guess... On uh, Twatter? <laughs> that was so bad. What happened? I got, I got an even worse then. one. Oprah was. I uh, made this joke to my girlfriend when Oprah was interviewing the, that woman who got her face oh, ripped the, up. Oh yeah. And I said, Oh yeah. I go. Where did she find her on No Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's really, but that's a really bad joke if it wasn't just so offensive. It yeah, was it's hilarious. Should not, it, it is shouldn't get horribly a, funny though. <laughs> <laughs> we no, no, it was one of those things where she was laughing, telling me I was going to hell, and I'm like, you're laughing too. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing. You know, we did two hours on that damn bitch, and we didn't come up with that, so mm -hmm. right yeah. on, Bill. What was her name? The lady got her face bitten out. Oh. Oh, that's such Is a great Virginia set, something? Matter anymore. Matter anymore. line, and I don't have the punchline for that. Matter. I, know. <laughs> I know, really, exactly. Yes. That is a great well, setup, and just nothing. Nothing comes to mind. Oh, no. Nash, Charlene Nash. That fucking poor, horrible video oh, that was. Another line you gotta do today? It's not What's even that? remotely funny. I said oh, another no. line you gotta do today. No, no, the fucking video of her is just... <laughs> it's terrible. She shouldn't have lived is what happened. Yeah. Did you, like, did you, you go through that kind of trauma. You, you shouldn't live. Yeah, you're not meant for an ape to eat your face for 45 oh, minutes and take a break and come back and finish it. There's also a joke just, there, but I'll leave it alone. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> hey, did you see that lady, that lady who, uh, she got hammered and she went in and she tried to feed a bear? And she lost, oh, two, yeah, of lost two of her and fingers. Oh, yeah, And that's what they say. They say that alcohol played a part in it. And it's like, no, it didn't. You're a fucking idiot. Yeah. And then you drank. At oh. no point, I, like, I never drank. And then, like, in the middle, hey, I'm going to go feed a bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I never <laughs> I've no. never been that hammered where I, yeah. I'm going to go jump the barriers, stick my arm in a bear cage, and fucking try to feed him between your thumb and forefinger. Like she was holding something and gave it to her, bit her thumb and pointer finger or clean off. She she was feeding and, through the, the yeah. Oh, yeah, and then got uh, half her middle finger uh, bitten off, and, and then the blamed, top of her the good. other one. She's blaming alcoholism. Dude, they blame like alcohol. Uh, that's like when somebody says yeah. something racist, they blame the alcohol. Yeah, it's like, yeah. no, dude, that's like that's I've, you. I fucked a few <laughs> pigs when I was drunk, but I never <laughs> fed a bear. <laughs> yeah, that's you know. <laughs> ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Some, some animal abuse. <laughs> fucking setting up my own joke. I'm a fucking loser. A uh, woman crashes car while shaving bikini area. A woman who shaved her bikini area while driving caused a car crash in Florida Keys, prompting police to issue fresh warnings about safe driving. How would you need to warn it? Like, that's an uh, epidemic? Yeah, that's just a one in a fucking zillion. Well, you know zillion. what that means? Is she got so fucked up, she couldn't pull her pants up, so... <laughs> <you pull> up. <laughs> the yeah. shaving cream and the, the razor, they just, like, passed out. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, what the Talking fuck? Talking into his shoulder. Yeah, we got a woman shaving her twat here. We got a, <laughs> she, do they even have a number for that? We got a 1040... <laughs> <laughs> woman shaving her twat. She actually... Needed to shave her twat so bad, she she told her husband to grab the wheel. You know that move? Oh, really? Oh, so the husband was in there? I guess so. Oh, Where the hell is she going? Because I was going to guess that she was cheating. Wait yeah, a yeah, minute. She's on her way. Hold on. I'm, wait a minute. Okay, hold on, hold on. Megan, 37, crashed into another vehicle after giving her ex-husband the wheel as she shaved the private uh, parts. Okay, so the ex-husband's in the car. She was driving to meet her boyfriend. She was driving to meet her boyfriend. With her ex-husband in the car. Oh, the uh, ex-husband. And she was shaving her pussy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, well, a, that's, that's a, a very fuck. healthy relationship. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. And they yeah. have to warn people that's that this great. might be an epidemic. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. The reason why she divorced that guy was he was such a freak, and the only way he could get off was to watch her shave her twat. <laughs> yeah, she so tried. she was trying to do it one more time. Because she felt bad that he had, he had his alimony payments increased. <laughs> or because he was such a non-man and he would never challenge her. She didn't respect him anymore. She's yeah. like, I'm going to go to my boyfriend's house. She's like, why don't you shave in the car? I'll hold the wheel yeah, for you. I got the wheel. <laughs> she had no respect for him. That's, That's the wheel. So That's how Jay Mansfield yeah, does. Yeah, just shaving it, looking at him. <laughs> this is what I'm going to give him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to make it all nice and clean for him. She put the hairs in a baggie and he'd smell them on the way home. <laughs> what a cuck. He is a cuck. She told why did I think I could out-creep Jimmy? <laughs> yeah, right. He Never. really just takes it to the whole other level. Yeah. Never. Uh, she, uh, You're a good boy. She wanted to be ready for her. <laughs> she wanted to be ready for her visit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice and clean shave. Were any injuries? Oh, that's good. Right. The day before the accident, she had been convicted and sentenced to nine months of probation for DUI and driving with a suspended license. That's good. Mm. 
We're all trying to figure out how it can DUI. Oh, I, I know. It's you know just... Driving undies or something. <laughs> yeah. It's... it's always looking for the fucking punchline. Yeah. There's not much <laughs> there. Forever searching, but yeah. Nothing quite there. No injuries? They didn't say if they were hurt? No, but you I You would mean, think that would fuck a girl up there, raise well, her down there, and she hit, hit something. The police guy yeah. there, whatever, one of the authorities, he's like, Hey, my phone's been ringing off the hook all day, and I know there's a funny side to this, but it's also deadly serious. It's very serious. This is a scary road, and a lot of bad wrecks are caused by dumb stuff like this. It's unbelievable. Like that? There's I'm really starting to believe no. this stuff Texting. only happens in the Keys. There's been studies maybe. done that shaving your pussy is actually yeah, more dangerous right. than driving drunk. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. That's how they're, they're going to make flying feel safe. You're more likely to be killed by a woman shaving a twat <laughs> <laughs> than you are to die in a plane crash, statistically. Ah, uh, shit. We got a woman with a very smelly pussy, guys. How would we have done that story? We do. Huh? Uh, remember trying to do that story? Oh, no kidding. No kidding. Um, you couldn't even call like we used to, like a, a smelly and then beep it. Right. Yeah, now, just, because you referenced the vagina last week. Yeah, dude. let's just say a certain part of her body uh, smelled badly. No, it was offensive uh, to oh, the no. olfactory oh, senses. Yes, yes. Down there. And no, that, can't say that. Oh, God. South of the border. No. What a mess. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, you're dinky, you're dingle. Yeah, she wanted uh, <laughs> someone to, you know, uh, do something to her that was south of the border, let's uh, just ew. say. And, uh... Well, her cunt stinks. Uh, <laughs> That's one way to say it. Woman utters line never previously recorded in a police report. <laughs> Meet Melissa Lee Williams. You can look this up for yourselves on, online to see what she looks like. Uh, the West Virginia woman, 41, is facing assault and weapons charges after allegedly waving a knife at two men who declined her demands to engage in sexual conduct at a West Virginia motor inn. Eat my pussy. Eat my fucking <laughs> pussy, motherfucker. She's the greatest. <laughs> I hope audio. She looks like Pat from Munaki with a fucking <laughs> with a wig. With a viral wig. wig. <laughs> wow, she does. <laughs> you know, lick it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> eat my pussy. <laughs> Lost my clit to diabetes. <laughs> oh, oh God! <laughs> According to uh, investigators, uh, Williams, who lives, check where she lives. She lives four doors down from her estranged husband at the seventy-seven Motor Inn. <laughs> oh, of course. She uh, showed up uh, showed up at his door and asked Danny Williams and another man to eat my pussy. Come on, boys. At this point, Williams commenced to undress herself. <laughs> yeah, they weren't even going to undress her. She starts taking her nasty white trash clothes off. Uh, uh, while Danny Williams declined said invita invitation, the other man... Knew. Adam Watson told cops that he agreed to perform at her request. I'll eat your pussy. So there was a guy that was willing to do this. However, as Watson approached Williams, he became overwhelmed by horrible <laughs> vaginal odor emitting from <laughs> Melissa Williams. Oh, he went in for it and got fucking denied. You know that I know the smell he probably means. It probably is that weird old person smell like where they're oh, really oh, dirty. Oh, that that oh, odd God damn it, you're pissing me off. Oh, Do you know the smell yes. I mean? It it's a smell of of, of just of of, of dirty Being dead skin. Clean. Yeah, yes. it's not a smell of just a sour pussy. It's a it, it's that assault on your fucking on your being oh, smell. Oh god. So he was going in but then he smelled that shit and said fuck this. Uh Watson understandably declined to proceed any further, so he backed off. This is when Melissa Williams allegedly produced a lockback folding knife, opened it, and pointed the weapon at her estranged husband. She then reportedly uttered a line never before uh, spoken in a police report. Somebody is going to eat my pussy, or I'm going to cut your fucking throat. <laughs> Someone's going to eat my pussy. Somebody's going to eat my pussy, uh, or I'm going to cut your fucking throat. Holy old shit. Old skunk twat. <laughs> Getting a little angry. <laughs> you think that would bring you to tears as a man? Not the knife part. That's that's laughable. You just knock it out of her hand. But being forced, maybe if she had a gun or something. Oh, for for start forcing laughing. to uh Being forced to eat a really horrendous smelling oh. pussy. Would that bring you to tears, you think? Of course. 
When Deputy uh, Mellinger arrived at the scene, he observed Williams, who, like the two men, appeared to be intoxicated, nude from the waist down, uh, <laughs> and nude from the waist down. After pocketing a knife that was on the coffee table in front of Williams, Mellinger arrested her for domestic assault and brandishing a deadly weapon. Her pussy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, not even the knife. <laughs> Nasty. Wow. Oh, Somebody's going to eat my pussy or I'm going to cut your fucking throat. Damn. She thought she was going to get her pussy at. And she was. She would have fucking scrubbed it. Oh, maybe. Kenny's here. You got a smelly pussy story? Oh, no, you got Jimmy's coffee. Oh. <laughs> got anything on the smelly pussy? No, I'm sorry. Aw. You're a happily okay. married man. Yes, I How am about for before many you were, years. How about before you were happily married? You ever oh, had... no, I was a virgin. Get it? No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. So. Oh, uh, what was it, Jennifer Aniston? Well, that's, that's, our, man. that's what we think. Jennifer Aniston has one of these smelly pussies. That's, that's why the, she can't get a man. That's the rumor. Something's going on with her. Yeah. Can we do uh, Deadliest Snatch finally? We've been trying to get oh, this bit going right. for a long time. We Deadliest just, get a sponsor? Snatch. I think, I think it's time to start doing some bits here and there again. Yeah. Deadliest Snatch. You think uh, these people down the hall would give us some kind of prize, and then we get women to come in here, and, and the woman with the smelliest snatch wins? Yeah, I think we should. And, and, and what's great about this bit, I mean, you could have the nicest smelly pussy ever. But for the contest, you could do it to get it really stink it up. Yeah, yeah to stink it up. I think and then you could explain what you use to stink it up. There might so be then you could though. save face with this contest. Sorry, Dan. Yes. Sorry, no, I didn't mean to step over you. Uh, there might be a good sponsor for this, too. There's a sponsor on, uh, they they sponsor Ron and Fez. It's a company. They make uh, products that freshen you up. Oh, really? Oh, right. So the per... balls, they clean up your balls. <laughs> well, that's the guy's version. Yeah, the guy's version is called too. Fresh Balls. Fucking worst balls uh, in the guy. Yeah. We do enough we, gay we, shit. We do enough gay shit. That's actually let, let, been pitched and approved. No, so. let's do the girl thing. Come on. Uh, do balls. Well, we could do balls, too. Yeah, balls are fucking hilarious. hilarious. Fucking balls. balls are as, like, hilarious. It's hilarious. A bunch of stinky it's balls. Smells. Who would smell Who's smelling them? the balls? That's Who's the beauty of it. We make I'm someone smell the no balls. No fucking balls. <laughs> oh, E-Rock. <laughs> that would be fucking hilarious. Even E-Rock say no fucking way. <laughs> I think hot girls coming in here and st you know stinking up their pussies for a contest would be a great, great I show. I absolutely yeah. agree. I think we could do both. I mean, we could do a little side thing. Maybe that could be the opening act, the fucking smelly yeah, balls. balls. Ugh. <laughs> That's disgusting. Dude, it's... What do we do to get this done? Yeah, what we'll do we get with? Do? Uh, we'll get with our. It's gonna be no insertion. Our management team, and, we, there, and there doesn't have to be nudity. Of course, they'll let the guys get nude. No, there's gotta be like we gotta be able to look at their. Pussy. We can do nude. Naked, we yeah. can do naked. We just yeah. can't. Uh, put yeah, but stuff. maybe some of the girls won't do it if they're naked. So maybe we could do the smell test through the pants. No, they which, have to. I think they have uh, to be. I think they have to be. No, because then you have to, they can hide something. They can make the panties smelly. We need a really good prize. Yeah, but yeah, I'm telling that, you, we're not kicker. just gonna get a lot of girls fucking getting naked. Well, here. That's the key. We need a good prize. Yeah, you give away somebody five thousand dollars, whatever. We're gonna get five thousand dollars. We'd be lucky to get five hundred from these guys. Uh, right. What? Travis? That's probably more. Oh, 500? We're not getting 5,000 with these guys. I think we could do it, though. If it was I Howard, he'd get 5,000. It. It's us. We get 500, maybe. Why don't we get a good prize thing, then? Like, like oh, cash is one somewhere. thing, but... Oh, well, huh? <laughs> we can work on it. Yeah. Can we yeah, set a date? Yeah. Let's just do it. Sure. Will they give us something down the hall? We, is we anybody can figure here? something out. Uh, at the moment, no, nobody is here. A and sponsor and later, I'm them. not sure anyone will be here. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Let's go home. Well, uh, could you talk <laughs> to the guys about it? Yeah. We really want to do... Uh, I think this, let's come up. I don't think... Of, yeah, I don't think uh, approval is, is going to be an issue with this we'll, one. We'll so, get it done. Smelliest We've Snatch or whatever. Other things approved that I didn't think would. Deadliest Snatch. Yeah, I like it. I like it, too. Deadliest Snatch. Yeah, and we need some women that are troopers. They come in and, you know. Yeah, that's going to be the hardest part. Uh, smell up. You got to give them a good pussy. prize, money, and something else if we can. Mm. Yeah, we'll see what they got laying around here. The stinkiest pink. It's an old Ron Fez thing. Yeah. The stinkiest pink. You have the stinkiest pink. Yeah. 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 <laughs> How about we call it the Enchilada South of the Border competition? That's a good one. Thanks. Oh, we have to get Bob Kelly in. That's a that's very uh, very true. He's a celebrity judge. Yeah, oh. celebrity judge. <laughs> Bob. Yeah. yeah, he'll yeah. fucking Bobby. He'll fucking. Smoke. Can we feed him beefaroni before the contest? Oh, yeah, oh, dude, yeah. I'm not that guy. I'm a, what am I coming in smoke? Go oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> is that yeah. what he's saying these days? Oh, Bob is a fucking animal. <laughs> I finally caught up on Louie. I watched the entire uh, first season, and uh, it's a great show. But Bobby was really good. Yeah, he's playing yeah. yeah. really terrific. Yeah, yeah Bobby's really acting is terrific. Yeah, I can't I wait like to see the second like, season of that show. What are you driving?
And he's calling him on the thing. He's like, bra, bra. <laughs> The day that DeRosa was in talking about that is yeah. the night that that episode aired. Oh, really? When, when he just picks up the phone, he's like, dude. Dude. Because <laughs> he does. He was just, it was Bobby. I like the whole out of breath on the treadmill acting. So, like, yeah. he's got to take breaths and huff and puff between each line. Yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that's got to be hard to do. Oh, no, I'm not saying it is. To run on a treadmill very, and do your lines. It was very good. That's why I'm giving him something. Uh, when he called him, though, and just did that, he's like, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's Bobby. Let's go to Rob in Jersey. Rob, no, what up? Hey What's there, up, Rob? Rob? Turn your goddamn up, thing Rob? down. Yeah, I know. I turn that shit off. Yo, so I went out with this ne- with this gorgeous ass fucking Indian girl, man. One night, like she was so fucking hot. I brought her to a party. Everybody's like, "Damn, you're so lucky you to tap that ass, man." I was so excited. I get her home, fucking take her clothes off, and I do that little stinky pinky action. Pretend like I'm gonna suck her titty and I take a little sniff on my pinky. Uh huh. Oh my god, dude, that shit was all oily and residue It was nasty. Dude. Oh, was fuck, what do you do? Residue What do you do? You, so nasty, man. you have sex I was with her. I some fucking dry even after that shit, man, with the water on, so she didn't hear me, man. Shit was disgusting. Oh, fuck. I've only had one pussy. I've had some hooker pussies that were awful, but I didn't go near them. You shit your pants and you dive in head first. <laughs> <laughs> you shoot the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but I got one. I was working um, many years ago at Caldor, and we were doing inventory. Caldor. <laughs> and there was a girl who I kind of wanted to fuck. Oh. Sexy girl, pretty girl. But we went back after inventory, a 10 hour day, went back to my house, my parents' house. And her breath smelled like a kernel of corn was in the pit of her stomach. She had like that corn breath. Uh, and her pussy, it smelled like pure, wet, rancid pit. Wow. Armpit. Oh, armpit. Oh, wow. But not like a little armpit's okay, but this was despicable. Ooh. Yeah, really. Yeah. Did, you, did you fuck her? I ate her pussy. And I was, uh, uh, did you really uh, eat her pussy? Uh, what, am I, what am I fucking... What are you, a rookie? From out of town? <laughs> <laughs> from out of town. I had, I had to decline that action once because... Uh, wow. Yeah, there was, this is like back in my high school days, but there was a chick who was I was fooling around with, and uh, we were at my house, and we had banged, and uh, I, I guess, you know, obviously I had finished before she had finished, and she wanted me to go down on her to finish uh, her off, but the fucking stink coming off of that thing was so awful oh, that I just oh. I just declined, and I just fingered her while I watched, it, <laughs> while I watched TV. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you watching? Oh, uh, man. Show about even, seagulls? Any, anything was better than going down on that one. <laughs> anything was better than that. It was, and, it was you, uh, awful. and you were done, so that's even worse. Uh, yeah, because now I don't even want to deal with yeah, this blood anymore. Because, the, yeah, I got no incentive to go yeah. down there and uh, oh, finish up. Yeah, oh. Like, there was no hotness to it or anything. I might as well have just been stabbing her with a knife. It would have been the same thing. <laughs> Walter's on the line. He's a regular from Connecticut. Go ahead, Walter. Hey, Op- hey bro. Um, you, you know, every neighborhood's got the, the girl that will just fuck anybody no matter what. Um, she lived at one of my friends' house in the back room. You'd walk back there, and it would just punch you in the face like a fucking hook from Tyson. The whole right. room would smell? Wow. Oh, it was terrible. We, we would rub her pussy over her jeans. Our hands would stink for two days. We used to physically, we would take her, we would duct tape her hands and her feet together, fully clothed, and we'd throw her in the shower. It, it, she was just disgusting. Wait, wow. so you would just rub your hand over her jeans, and it would smell? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah, that's a case of uh, vaginosis. <laughs> uh, vaginosis. What happens is it, it, in the folds and the lips, uh, you get a buildup of uh, perspiration and other uh, fluids that leak and, and get caught inside the folds. Uh, <laughs> you got to use the crease. Yeah, well, uh, there's yeah. occasionally a clitoral secretion. <laughs> uh, they'll cause a vaginosis. Uh, sometimes changing diet will help. Uh, <laughs> changing diet? Yeah. yeah. I dated a girl like that once. I got it on my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got one more quick one for you. Yeah, go ahead, Walt. Uh, I fucked a gimp one time. All right, she had uh, she had nerve damage in her arm and her leg. <laughs> um, Jesus. I met her, she had you know MySpace voodoo going on. Okay, <laughs> so I had uh, never met her in person. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do this. Let I me ask you a question. What part of the country was she from? Just say it without the town. Connecticut. Okay. Not Westchester? Right. No, no, no. It's Connecticut. Okay. All right. So she comes, out, she comes out of the house, and she's limping to the car. I'm like, oh, fuck. Um, I take her to Denny's, all right? There's a hotel behind the Denny's. We get into the room. I got to undress her, which is embarrassing enough. I go into the bathroom because I don't want to do this, but I'm already there. I'm talking to myself out loud in the mirror. I'm like, dude, I'm like, you're already here. You got to do this. You got to do it. I wind up. I fucked her. 
when I was done, I had to I had to strap her arm back to her chest, put her fucking leg brace back on, and dress her. It was it was horrible. It's <laughs> <laughs> too much work. All right, Walter. Thanks for the stories today. Yeah, it's Brian. too much work. All right, let's go to Boston. It's Andy. 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 What's up, buddy? Hey, my buddy Mike, right? We were so fucking jealous at how hot this girl was that he was dating. We couldn't understand it. So finally, he breaks up with her, and we're like, you're, you're crazy. So he tells us a story. She blamed it on Paula, but he told me he could never, ever fuck her in the pussy. He always had to hit it in the shitter because uh, uh, she stunk that bad. He literally would put a She would see him putting a pillow over his face, too. So he said it just got too bad. Where he wow. Had to he was better putting it where the poo comes out. Where the poop comes out, oh he my had to do it backwards. He, under the, she was under ah. the covers, was in pillow over his face, and he still couldn't take it. And she was, she was, a, she was a knockout. I guarantee you that she, there was something in her pussy, like some kind of a yeast. And you're a fucker girl, and you pull it off, and it looks like it looks like your dick was sipping milk with a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you put a little bit of provolone on your dick, and it melted. <laughs> That happens sometimes uh, when they have a yeast infection. Yes, you get that little ring of Cool Whip around the base of your cock. Yeah, and then you fucking <laughs> you dry your dick off with a towel because sometimes I shower after, sometimes I don't. And then you got yeah, you got that like fucking yeah. that, ring of potato flex after it dries. Yeah, like a fucking little milk print. Like, what happened to my wiener? Well, it's got a <laughs> Kurt in Jersey. Dick Kurt. Is eating grits. <laughs> Kurt, what's up? <laughs> what's up, guys? Girl. I know a girl with like a legendary smelly pussy, but what's a good way to ask her to take part in a in the contest. Well, have, have her call the show. We'll do it for you. Just see if she'll call the radio show. Yeah. Out. Try to be subtle about it, though. Yeah, we'll yeah. explain it less sensitive. Yeah, we're really yes. good at this type of thing. Yeah, call our old but, Staten Island box. We haven't done that in a while, where we uh, we take care of bad news for people. Yeah. Have her call the show. We'll take care of that for you, yeah. Kurt. Have her, just we'll, have her call in. We'll do it carefully. Yeah, yeah we'll do it, it very carefully. We'll, 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 we'll handle it with kid gloves. Pull out and your dick looks like it's covered with farina. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst. And then it gets like into little balls when you got to try it. It's like, what happened? <laughs> what the hell was in there? You put glue on my penis, you <laughs> fucking dirtbag. <laughs> Old milky pussy. This thing, men have vomited on this chick. Oh, like, my God. Oh my wow. God. All right, let me, uh, thank you. Let me uh, take one more from the Philly kid. Philly kid. When I was in high school, I was double dating with a buddy of mine. We were at the drive-ins, and I started going at it with my girl in the back. Look at this, 1955? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What were your inspiration well, no, points? The Fonz? <laughs> we're from the country, man. We had drive-ins. Oh, um, anyways, so when he went down on her, we were in the back seat. It stank so bad. We had to fucking crack the windows. Oh. We didn't want to say anything. Because Did you put her in the rumble seat? <laughs> like the next day, I talked to my buddy. I'm like, oh, my God, your girl stank. And it was the first girl he's ever been with. So he just assumed that that's the way it's supposed to be. It was wow. right. <laughs> Smart assumption. I don't know that it's stanky, but damn. Uh, are we, we going to do our, uh, our smelly pussy contest or what? Yeah, we got to. Can we just, Definitely. like, let's pencil it in for two weeks from today. Two weeks? Or can we get it done next Friday, you think? I don't think no, so. No, more time. No, we We're going to try to do this. Get chicks as long as the stay. guys down the hall will do the right yeah, thing. Yeah, we just need, we need chicks. And get a good prize, and we can get prize. chicks. Uh, we'll have yeah. more info on this on Monday, but two weeks from today, we're going to try to do it. Get women in here and see who has the smelliest pussy. And they don't have to have smelly pussies as, as they're walking around. They could just stink it up for the contest. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Don't worry about it. Yeah, all right. Won't be held against you, wow. ladies. Wow, this is a very common thing. Look at all these phones. Yeah. I think we're just about done with it, but... Uh, oh, God. Um, I could spend hours talking about this. I, I know. I've, I'm reading some of the ones that are coming in. Well, it's my, so disgusting. This would be the point I tell the same story I've told a million times about my uh, my girl from Geneseo. Ugh. I had one of these, Ugh. these bad pussies. A bad pussy. Well, I thought they all smelled like that because I wasn't that experienced yet. With yeah. the hand out the window, that story. God's honest truth. Uh, I remember being a, a, a kid and when you'd be, be with a girl and, you know, because you have a lot of hand action, you know, your finger and everything. And, and then the next day, you'd be like... Oh, you like oh, that? See, I didn't yeah, like yeah. that smell the next day. No, it was great the next day because it would totally remind you of the night and it was, like, great. Yeah, I, I never liked it. it again. I would hate when people put their fingers under my face and shit. I, oh, I, no, I, w I would never do that. Like, they smell my finger. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fucking... Such a high school. Thing. I know. <laughs> yeah, but it was like, you know, you'd just kind of be like, ooh, yeah, I like that.
All right, we got the uh, the gay evangel evangelist. Evangelist. We got that story. We got. Uh, oh, uh, remind me. We got to play Jim Norton on Letterman the whole set. We, we were oh, supposed yeah. to play this yesterday, and Jim's in Atlanta, so we'll do that going into break. Someone remind me on that. We got shame, shame, shame on you. A new one. Yeah. From, what What was the problem? Special needs girl late to school all the time because of long bus ride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I gotta hear this. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, this. yeah. We'll, we'll go right. right to that. What about the wax lipping? No, retard beats out yeah. wax lips. And what about uh, some uh, children's lyrics uh, appropriate for children? Question mark. Oh, that that's too vague. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what what it means, but I could. You know, shame, shame, shame. Retard. Long bus ride. It's easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Arnold Diaz. Shame. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Last month, we reported that 17-year-old Andrea Avant, a special needs student, used to love going to school until this year, when the bus trip became a nightmare. Tell me about the bus, Andrea. They're late. They're late. <laughs> they're late. Yeah, they're late. They're every day? Every day. Every day. Yeah, every day. As we told you, the bus Andrea rode had to pick up 17 special needs students on a long route, starting in Far Rockaway, winding its way... Well, yeah, because we got to spread them out. You don't want them all in one neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> got to thin them out. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. On a long route, starting in Far Rockaway, winding its way through Queens, not arriving at the Information Technology High School in Long Island City <laughs> until 9.30 or 10 o'clock, oh. long past the school's 8 o'clock starting time. So, Yikes. Andrea, you're on the bus for two to three hours in the morning? Two hours. Yeah, two to three two hours three. in the morning. Oh, uh, who was talking first? Uh, and then who uh, stepped in? You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, because... Uh, uh, <laughs> well, you know. Problem. Uh, problem. I have a problem with the name of this school. Yeah. Shouldn't finger painting be in the title of that school <laughs> somewhere? So how does Arnold help? Uh, well, uh, he's a do-gooder. He visits the bus company. Mm -hmm. The long trip, we reported, violated the education department's own guidelines that say no student should be on the bus longer than 90 minutes. But Michelle Avant said her daily complaints were falling on deaf ears. But because it's a special needs deaf child, school. or a child who, don't, who doesn't have a voice, it, it's like we'll get to it when we get to it. It has to be done now. And we told you, unbelievably, the manager of the Little Richie Bus Company pleaded ignorance. The parents say they've been calling and making complaints, and you're the general manager. Shouldn't you know about the problem? Honestly, I didn't know about the problem. No. Yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. 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 When, whenever the guy admits to it. Right. Like, unless somebody shoves their fist in the camera lens, it doesn't work for him. So it's like, oh, I didn't know about the problem. Yeah. 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 Well, Pete from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, my wife is a special need uh, amateur porn star on imawaterhead.com. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of confessions coming in on the instant feedback. Uh, keyboard commando from Boston. Opie, I found out my wife was Jenna Jameson after being married for four years. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <So. laughs> Damn, that must have been a surprise. Uh, all right. And finally, uh, Arnold, of course, gets results. Of course he does. So last month, we put the city education department and the school bus company in the hall of shame. And what do you know? The next day, the problem was solved. After the broadcast, everything went the way it was supposed to go. More buses were added to the route, just as the parents had been requesting. So instead of having to pick up 17 students all over Queens... Now they only have 11 kids on the bus, and it's within my area. The result is Andrea now spends only an hour or so on the bus. After the story, yeah, it came here. It came here on time. Yeah, oh, on time. But right, it, it came here on time. Like and did you get to school on time? Yeah. Oh. In fact, we took these pictures of Andrea's bus arriving at school a few minutes before the eight o'clock opening bell. She hasn't been late at all since our report. She's Thanks. not missing any classes, which is great. We're totally pleased. We're extremely pleased. I like to thank um, Fox. Thank you. Thank you. Good. It's our pleasure. Know who their audience is. <laughs> uh, I certainly do. That was a 
It was a lackluster shame, shame. Yeah. I like the ones where they're confrontational. The guy goes, t t tells him, go shit in his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold, go shit in your hat. <laughs> we got one of these uh, sex offender stories. Yeah. We love the sex offender stories. There's so many of them. Listen to what they're doing on Long Island. Well, imagine finding out that 27 sex offenders lived in your neighborhood. That's what the people of Hempstead discovered, <laughs> along with other Oops. neighborhoods on the south shore of Long Island, and many are finding out for the first time. Sex offenders dumped in shelters like this one in Hempstead. Residents had choice words for the agency responsible. They gotta live somewhere. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, what town's gonna be the, the one town that uh, accepts this? Oh. With open arms? No one. East no Hampton. one. <laughs> no one. But it's responsible. Uh, Shame on you. It's uh okay, so far Hempstead? Huh? So far Hempstead? So far Hempstead. Didn't yeah. we didn't we do a story uh where they were in Mastic? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We're seeing a trend. <laughs> well they said poor towns all over the exactly. south shore of Long Island. We'll see if uh, the reports have been done differently differently. Imagine you're a sex offender and you find out all your neighbors are <laughs> Choice words for the agency responsible. Shame on you, because you're you're deteriorating actually lives by the hundreds in these urban areas. Newsday reports Wait, the largest. Deteriorating? They're deteriorating. Wow. What are they gonna do next? Go look at the fall foliage. <laughs> That's a common mistake, though. Foliage and foliage. Yes, but people under the age of seven frequently say that. <laughs> People who used to carry guns professionally never do. Deteriorating. Hundreds in these urban areas. Newsday reports the largest clusters of sex offenders are concentrated Clusters. in low-income areas of Long Island's South Shore. We see they exist in Freeport, Roosevelt, Hempstead, Uniondale, all areas of middle to lower income areas. Middle. These offenders are level two and three, those most likely to strike again. They're placed in neighborhoods with little political power. It's unfair and it's not put in neighborhoods where they are, are more affluent. Another problem in these neighborhoods, yeah. rents are cheaper yes. and landlords are more willing of to... Of course! What do, you, what do you want them to do? What do you want to put them on Park Avenue and have them pay yeah. $3,800 a month? <laughs> 3800 a month on Park Ave? I don't know. I don't live there. Maybe for a closet. 10000 Yeah. All right. Start at 10000 what, what about the really rich sex offenders, though? Where That's a good go? point. They sure probably pick up their own digs somewhere. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, they're in uh, Thailand or something. Yeah, I think out of the be, country. I think people should be forced in low-income neighborhoods to have sex offenders living in their kid's room <laughs> <laughs> and chipping in for the rent. <laughs> See, put it this way. The sex offender is going to be scared to go out. I think that's a, they, they're, they got a strategy here. What do you want? What, do you want them in, in, in nice, affluent parts of Long Island? It ain't going to happen. Nope. This is all based on uh, what you pay your taxes for. If, you're, if your tax bill is really, really low, your services and who lives in your neighborhood is going to be uh, a little off. If yeah. your taxes are really high, you're paying to not have a bad element in your neighborhood and to have all of your services working well. That's just the way this country works. Who's surprised by this? You're actually safer, though, when you live near them. I lived next to a rapist for a few Ooh. summers. Yeah, uh, sexy now. Yeah, and it was it was then the law the law came out. That you had to tell your neighbors, you know. <laughs> and uh, hello. Yeah, yes. you, you know. But you, but home. Statistically, you're a lot safer <laughs> living right next door to a sex offender than. Yeah, it's kind of hard town. to rape someone yeah. and run next door. Yeah. yeah, he's on the lam. There he goes. Oh, next door. Lights on. Let's get him. <laughs> that is stupid. Did you tease him at all? Did he rape girls or guys? No, I remember one day though he came up to me. It was it was uh, my family. It was like one of those like a summer thing in Montauk that we went out to and uh, right on the beach and I remember one day my sister before we knew this he, he asked my sister if she wanted to take a boat ride with him he had a boat. oh that's good and uh, then two days later the old we Peterson out, Cruise we, we never went back <laughs> the, the, the lost son or maybe the guy's just into boating yeah <laughs> I mean you know you have many different hobbies boating and rape yeah, yeah but it doesn't mean he's gonna take your sister on a boat trip to rape or maybe he just wants to go out and enjoy the, the water I mean we did live next door so I'm sure it was fine maybe he fancies him himself a young Alan Hale. <laughs> <laughs> Another problem in these neighborhoods, rents are cheaper and landlords are more willing to take on sex offenders as tenants. And what about notifying people? Right now, police only do it once. 
when the sex offenders move in. So if you move in after the time they do a notification, which is quite possibly, you know, very likely, then chances are you're not going to be notified. Well, the Department of not Social sure Services says How there's often do they so expect you to be notified? Every 20 minutes you get yeah. a phone call? Uh, do we mention? Yes. Yes, I guess. yes, we know. And he didn't, he didn't forget. We know, I heard. Thank you. <laughs> you should know when your tax bill comes and it's easy to pay. <laughs> That's yeah. when you know that your whole neighborhood is full of uh, people that might cause you some type of harm. And someone has to stick up for the sex offenders. These guys got to be scared assless living in this these yeah, neighborhood. I don't stop at lights <laughs> in these neighborhoods. Right. I keep going. You think these sex offenders are walking out uh, and walking the streets whistling a happy tune? No. And everybody knows why you're living there. If you're like all of a sudden you're a middle-aged white guy with a mustache and a bad gut, everybody knows why you're in that neighborhood. You know, and you smell like Similac. <laughs> <laughs> Old baby powder breath. Let's go to Debo from Patterson, all New excited Jersey. excited about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Debo. Hey, what's going on? In front on, of your brother? pants goes as a mash unit. Hey. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's a slow news day. It really is. Yeah, it happens. Got some cute stories we could uh, get into. Cute. Yeah, you know. Oh, our uh, definition of cute, which means horrifically horrible. Shut up. You're going to ruin it. Don't ruin it. Two elderly women in Daytona, Florida, are recovering today after some scary moments trapped them inside their sweltering car. Officials say the Cadillac's battery died in yesterday's midday heat, and that knocked out the automatic locks. After two hours, a passerby spotted call 911 on the back of some tissue in the window there and called police. This woman were apparently unaware that they could unlock those doors manually. Fortunately, though, you seem being carried away by EMS to get some treatment. You stupid old bags. All right, I was with the, the elderly women for a second there. There is not a car made that you can't just unlock manually in okay. some fashion. So what do you think they were doing? In way, shape, or form. Being stupid old, don't know what modern machinery is like people. How would you unlock them if they locked like the uh, automatic locks? I have no idea. I mean, I, I just There's usually open. some kind of slide mechanism on the door that unlocks your uh, vehicle. Uh, Than's got info. Than? Well, apparently they had to smash the window out to get them out. They did? Yeah, they, the whoever showed up, the police or whatever. They still couldn't figure it out. Well, because couldn't, they couldn't figure it out. Even describe it to them, I guess. They had to smash the window to release them. How about uh, any news on what year the car was? Or? Yeah. Is there an owner owner's manual in the glove box that they could have maybe thumbed through their old fingers and cataract-ridden eyes trying to read? <laughs> trying to, I don't know, Martha. I'm looking. I can't find it. It says the seats are leather. And I'm baking. Oh, what'd they get? The heat stroke? A little of the heat stroke? A little bit, a little bit. Poor old people. In handcuffs and placed in the back of the deputy's car is how Jamal Williams ended a morning that began with the carjacking of an elderly couple's car, according to authorities. Get a job, I got one. Take away people's cars like yours. At about 10 this morning, an elderly couple that wished to not be identified was at Murphy's Gas Station in Melbourne when a man pointed a gun at them, demanded their 2006 Silver Chevy Impala, and then drove off with it. The couple immediately called 911, and with the help of the car's OnStar system, police were able to track the car and suspect down in Cocoa. Uh -huh. And when we caught up with the suspect, he said he targets senior citizens. Any old lady, any, any. <laughs> Police also located on the roof of the apartment complex, Williams allegedly tried to hide in after abandoning the stolen Chevy Impala. And Williams is now in the Brevard County Jail, charged with carjacking, drug possession, and for violating his probation. Uh, where's the hate crime? Where's the mother effing hate crime he should be charged with for targeting white people? I thought of that. My only guess is because it wasn't a violent crime. What? I mean, I'm just getting. I'm, I'm was guessing. it a carjacking? Plus, I'll never it's a violent crime. Black people with carjacking. With carjacking car is a violent crime. It's traumatic. I agree. It's violent. It's abusive. It's 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 an assault. That should be a hate crime. He is targeting people based on their race. Just get. It. I've had it. Oh, God, have I had it. He said his job is taking white people's cars. Taking white people's cars. There you go. There you go. There you and go. And our job is taking black people's freedom. There you go. Bye-bye. Have fun. Hope your little jokes and gags work good in the joint, my friend.
And I use the joint to be cool. I say the joint. That's right. I say in the can of the pokey when I'm talking to the pokey. When I'm talking to chicks, I say that. God, I'm sick of it. Can we get a little civilization in this world, please? Or at least in this country. I don't care what happens in the rest of the world. All the violence, the better in the rest of the world. Just build a wall, a big wall of anti violence. That's right. The I, second you act up, boom, gone, over the wall, start swimming. I want to be surrounded by lilacs. Yes. That's nice my dream. smelling. Yeah, flowers. God, I've had it. We got to we got to coddle too much. Don't get me started on that friggin' the pope statement. Well, he apologized cuz you know Muslim clerics what do do always there? apologize after they say something and immediately, you know, Christians and Jews run out and murder um, you know, uh, uh, like the, the, uh, Muslim women, of course. You know, they, they, they yeah. just shot a nun because that's something the Pope said. It's just a lovely group. You're a yeah. lovely group of people, and that's what you are. Yeah. That murder of that nun is what you are. It cements what the Pope was didn't even say, by the way. He's he quoting. Was, he was quoting something from friggin' eight billion years ago. Boy, they they're sensitive. There's just no. There's no peaceful disagreement in Islam. No. There's no ability to not set fires to to to, to effigies. It's an yes. effigy, is it? Yeah. That's what you do. Stomping on violent. flaming flags and effigies and just staring into cameras, making faces that I swear you'd only see in a zoo. I swear to you, you'd only see if you if you l left an animal starving and then threw a piece of meat at him. And then they shot a nun. And the, yeah, they shoot a nun lovely. to show how what the Pope said about them being uh, violent and yeah. <laughs> they're lovely people. That's a good way to show how nonviolent you are by shooting a nun. There you religion. Go. Here's the story. Reactions to the Pope's apology have led Italian police to tighten security of potential yeah. Catholic targets across the country. Meanwhile, Vatican officials are saying they hope this wave of hatred does not result in grave consequences. I hope you surf on any waves of hatred. There are no signs of protest and anger around the world is oh. abating, even after an extraordinary personal apology from Pope Benedict. Appearing at the summer papal palace, I'm the sorry. Pope said he was deeply sorry and that he meant only to inspire an interfaith debate. A former deputy of the Sunni Arab world's most powerful institution said the Pope's comments were a clear and direct insult to Islam. Others have said a full retraction is needed. There you go. Lovely religion. Isn't it? Lovely. That's the way the modern civilized world handles problems. We set things on fire and jump up and down on them like we're in the opening scene of 2001 A Space Odyssey. <laughs> Lovely group of human beings. Shoot a nun. How does it end? How does it end, Jim? How does this whole thing play out? It doesn't. With the destruction of the doesn't. world? Uh, no, I don't think it's anything that melodramatic. I, I think we just uh, can. I'm not saying it. now. I'm Charlton saying Heston gets eventually. shot and hits the atomic bomb <laughs> button. I'm saying down the road. I don't know, man. A few generations from now, is it the end of the the, uh, the world? Who wins this one? Someone's got to win. Whether it ends or not, uh, someone's got to win. Do we win? Do the Muslims win? I hope it's like I hope it's like the Buddhists or the Hindus or somebody who's like pretending to be peaceful, but the whole time they've been working on a bomb. Now I that'd it, be trickery. I hope it's the Buddhists and they've been working like all this pe all those dumb clocks in the stomachs. Uh, have bombs, <laughs> little a bombs. <laughs> yeah. That's why the stomach's so round. You think it's going to just the nuclear core? You think it's going to end in like a round robin tournament? Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, just kicking ass. Get them all together. They have such this th this uh, thing for their religion, this passion. I don't even want to call it a passion because it's not really passion, passionate it's about savage, it. It's, it's, it's savage this, rage. It's an insanity. Hey, look, they it's shot a the cult. The guy Van Gogh, one of Van Gogh's relatives, did an unpopular, they th not a favorable play about Muslims or yeah. how they treat their women uh, in Denmark. And so, uh, how is it reviewed? Uh, well, they gave it a negative review. I don't know. It was, I think it was a, a nine bullet, one knife review, uh, which is, uh, according to Rotten Tomatoes, is not good. Right. And the guy did it, of course, because that's what uh, I guess. Uh, I guess when you're in that religion and that's what you're a healthy Muslim, that what you do. I don't know. But that appear apparently is the way they solve all our religious disagreements. See, their I'm religion early. apparently is that you cannot in any way criticize their religion. Right. If you do, uh, the penalty is death. Mm hmm. 
that's a real nice peace. But they say it's a peaceful religion. But there's no open, uh, uh, there's no debate, there's no uh, dialogue with these people about religion. It's their way or you are put to death. We got more. So how the hell do you then talk to them about this? You don't. You don't. There's more on the story. The comments came in a speech the Pope made last week at Regensburg University in Germany. Yes. I think it's going to take years. Uh, for the damage done to uh, uh, Christian-Muslim relations to be repaired. This team like, this the, jihad. like it was good. The Pope, who is said to write all of his own speeches, quoted a 14th century emperor who said the Prophet Muhammad brought nothing but evil and inhumane things to the world. Pope Benedict went on to criticize jihad and holy war, suggesting it flies in the face of God. As news spread, so did the violence. It's got great timing, in Somalia, huh? where an Italian nun was gunned down to the West Bank, where as many as five churches were burned. Yeah, burned, burned churches. churches. In addition to the anger in the Muslim world, there has been a complicated debate in Italy among Catholics, many of whom question whether Pope Benedict appreciates the reaction he got to his comments and whether the Vatican should have more power to veto what the Pope says uh, in public. Veto what Why the Pope should they veto why? it? Because these savages can't handle criticism. Why? God Almighty, are we finished? The, the Vatican whole world is veto. supposed to bend over backwards and walk on eggshells because some people cannot handle being criticized or disagreed with. First of all, the Pope's infallible, so it's right. Whatever he says is right. <laughs> and why would anybody listen to what I, my, That's the other part of my point. Who cares what he says? He's an older man with a stupid hat. When, <laughs> <laughs> Who cares what the Pope says? When was the last time Wait the Pope by. was relevant? <laughs> Just nonsense. His uh, stupid statements and his even dumber apology, and they're awful. Whole thing just sucks. Bill and Waterford. Uh, oh, bro. Jesus versus Muhammad in a LARPing match. A LARPing? Jesus can cast better spells. You think? Yeah, that Muhammad? Come on. Muhammad needs a bunch of savages. You do two damage. Jesus two damage. Can just, and he just lops your head off. Jesus showed, you know, some good things he could do for people, but. I'm sure if he gets a little aggravated, he's uh, not turning uh, water into wine. Turn it into napalm. Or acid or something. Acid, something yeah, very yeah, yeah. damaging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too damaged. All right, it's the only virus spreading across America. Yeah, yeah we'll do I know the Pope later. is German and not Italian. I said Mamma Mia because he's in Italy. The Vatican. So the Vatican's 30. in Italy, and they're speaking Italian. You dope. You don't think I know the Pope is in the Hitler Youth? It's the first thing I learned about him. <laughs> Had more than my share of him as well. The Pope. Enough already. Uh, we got lots to do. We got uh, Team Beat with his own leg. Prosthetic leg. We have uh, the San Diego Fox reporter getting his ass kicked. Go to YouTube. It's a great video. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got Howie talking about our Letterman appearance. Where you want to go? Where, which way you want to uh, go? I want the reporter to get beat up. Which way you want to yeah. go? I want to hear the reporter getting beat up. Beat up reporter. I beat saw up. the footage. It was better than pornography. It was hilarious. That's why I want my Panasonic hooked up so I can watch that in a crisp, clear fashion. That guy getting his face kicked. Well, because it was one of these, <laughs> Another like... Another busybody segment. It was one of these, yeah, like, shame on you type uh, reports, I guess. A busybody. That's even better. You're right, Anthony. Busybody. You know, they just uh, kind of comb the area and find some ass. They find a story uh, about, uh, I don't know, somebody that uh, hasn't been paying something they're supposed to or holding back services from somebody, and then they shove cameras in their faces and expect to get answers from these people that are... You know, it's either scumbags or criminals or whatever. Uh, or sometimes they're just people, uh, I don't know, uh, owners of stores that are trying to keep from being robbed so they don't let certain elements into their stores. Things like that. It's those stories. See, here's the weird line I have with reporters. When they're doing a shame on you story where they're attacking these guys that are ripping the public off, I don't mind them as much. Because they're actually going after a scumbag. But when they're like mm -hmm. hassling regular people who aren't doing anything, that's when I want to see them get their faces course. kicked in. So I would love to know what this guy did that well, the reporter was hassling. The reporter this is some kind of real estate scam, I believe, yeah. that the woman was involved in. And was that her husband or just some guy? I'm guessing. So her husband comes out of the car and just starts pummeling the reporter. It's, it's a great video. Uh, so I, I don't think these two were just, you know, were, were legit. 
I think they, they might have been involved in some kind of scandal. I don't know what the story is, but even if they were, let's say they were uh, involved in some kind of scandal, the, the reporters think that they can just go up to people and shove cameras in their face uh, with impunity. They're on their front lawn. Yeah. They're at their front door. And they notice that this woman they won't was let putting you, up a fight. They won't let you close the front door sometimes. They kind of hold your their arm in the way so they can get a little more footage of you. She's yeah. being violent, like throwing water right. on the camera. And they saw, great, this is going to look good on TV. She's putting up a fight. Let's push her more. And he keeps putting his hand out, like going, I'm so, yep. oh, that's inappropriate language, miss. Like, he starts... Judging the language that she's, he's like goading her, like you know what he's doing. Yeah, so he's just, he's like, I'm behaving. Why aren't you? Like you know what he's doing. So right. Why he deserved it just because of who he is. All right. So uh, let's get into it a, a little bit here. This is out of San Diego. The video is up on YouTube. We love YouTube. While you're at YouTube, yes. uh, throw Opie and Anthony in the search. There's some great videos up there to check out. And we caution you that the following footage is graphic and may be disturbing to some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, other reporters. Well, uh, you hear what's going on there. There's no reason to show this on TV, by the way. We're not going to, like, learn anything from this. Uh, the country's not going to become better, you know. No. They're, they're exploiting this great footage, and they should. But to give the warning ahead of time, like, well, we really need to show you this, but it's very disturbing. Mm -hmm. Just look, shut up and play the video. Yeah. Should have amend hey, look at Sean Cassidy. Oh, no, wait, that's Hillary Clinton. He should have, <laughs> he should have amended the, uh, the statement and said, some of you will find this disturbing. The other 99% of you are going to laugh and hoot. We'll find it hysterical it's funny. Right. Just play the video. Stop trying to act like you're, you're goody, goody two-shoes. Yeah. Call the police. The attacker is Sam Suleiman, the key subject of a series of reports by Fox 6 investigative journalist John Mattis. Now finds himself in a fight for his life. For his life. For his life. He just got his ass kicked. He got a normal ass kicking. The guy punched him. The guy didn't use a weapon. The, the guy was just punching him. The guy came on and roundhoused him. He came around with his right hand and just bam on the side of his face. It was a great shot. Then he grabbed the reporter. They both go down and he punched him in the face a couple more times. Got a shoe in his face once. The guy's side of his face is completely bloody. It wasn't a fight for his life. There was no fight for his life. The yet. guy got his ass kicked. And he had uh, help there, a cameraman or a producer or something, jumping on his back. Yeah. The other guy's back that was beating him up. And then there was a warning there, though. The woman was throwing water right into the camera lens. Yep. That should have been your sign to get the hell out of there. And threw the bottle at the camera. She was all pissed off. But, I mean, but uh, they had to keep uh, rolling uh, footage because it was too good. And you got what you deserve. You should have uh, moved away at that point. Right. Oh, he blocked his life. You guys be, are trying to do to my life. You're invading my life. Whether you learn this oh, oh, whole oh, thing, you say, yes, that's what you're doing. That is Suleiman's wife, Rosa, who immediately oh, blames the media for her troubles. But the evidence appears to speak no, otherwise. Please, continue. We found out that the real estate purchase contracts are all forged. Also, the loan documents, uh, the loan application, uh, the 1003, as well as all disclosures have been all forged. Sounds like uh, the couple, you know, they're scumbags. They're shady. Sounds like it. But that's just it. You don't go shoving cameras in their face thinking because you got a camera that uh, nothing's going to happen. That it, reporter, by the way, as we were playing that, I was watching the clip on uh, the TVs in front of us. Yeah. That reporter cannot fight at <laughs> all. The worst fight ever. But I'm sure when he does his reports, he's the tough guy. He's oh, getting yeah. things done for the uh, community. Well, why don't you comment on, yeah. uh, hey, excuse me, pow, we have the right to ask you these questions. Right. All right, tough guy, bam, Guess hit what? in the face. The second he got hit in the face, he turned around, did nothing but got into the cowering defensive position where the other guy continued to just beat his face. <laughs> Look at this show. The guy bit up. Beat up. <laughs> he, ah, he, you got beat up. Look at you. <laughs> he, he, he did not throw back a punch. <laughs> He did nothing but get his ass completely handed to him. He's a bleeder, too, man. Oh, is he a bleeder? He looks like Chuck Webner. The Bayonne bleeder. What is the wife? Oh, and then he gets oh, kicked, kicked in the, the face. face. Now, the reporter should have bit the guy right there on his leg. Look at him. 
He can't even lift a one leg off. The, and then the guy the clawed at him too. He clawed at his face. And the, uh, and the camera kept rolling. Oh, keep the, the camera rolling. Cameraman doesn't help you. He nope. keeps filming. Please uh, give me the tape of uh, the discussion Fox Five is having on this incident. Yes, definitely want to hear their. Because they're all like just shaking their heads, very like, concerned. Probably saying we're just trying to do our job. No, shame, no, shame, no. shame. No. No one will tell you uh, how it is. I, I, I truly believe except us. I really do at this point. The guy got greedy. Yeah. He got some great footage of the girl throwing water on the camera, and, he's, and he got greedy. Yeah. He had enough to, to get an, a, 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 sen a sensational story, mm -hmm. sensational video. Right. But he kept uh, prodding at that point, and he got what he deserved. And the husband had you enough. You got what you deserved. The guy who was pulling him off was not a cameraman. He was the guy who was about to be interviewed. He was just a guy. He was not working with them. That black guy was not working with him. He was just a good Samaritan. He was, uh, it said, he was accused, oh, he was this, this scumbag, Solomon, was stealing identity so he could buy houses and rent them to others. Right, so he was obviously oh. a piece of crap. Yeah. But Brian Phillips, the man who was about to be interviewed, is seen trying to pull Solomon off Matisse or whatever his name is. So this guy, this cameraman, the vulture keeps filming <laughs> he did while nothing his to help. guy is getting his ass beaten. <laughs> he did nothing to help. <laughs> he got everything in frame. <laughs> what? Well, a disgusting Excuse industry. me. Could you just kick his ass a little longer? Right. I got to white balance the camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what a disgusting industry. Well, the cameraman, uh, he knew what was more important. That's what's. Of course. That's, what, that's why I want I want the discussion to have it on Fox. Did you get that? <laughs> right. I would love Because I think a second guy would have uh, helped the situation. There. Yeah, two guys against one because the because the reporter was useless. He was just getting his ass kicked. Let me tell you something. Um, I hate to uh, announce this, but we we have brought back the assault on the media, and he wins. <laughs> <laughs> that that is the ultimate assault on the media. Yeah, the cameraman Ooh. kept filming. Uh, Why are they not criticizing oh. this? Scumbag cameraman. If you see your guy getting his ass handed to him, which that, that reporter was getting a beating. That was a beating. You should take your camera and bop it over the guy's head. Yes. Just wail him over the head with your big camera. Not film the whole thing. Is your he's supposed to be your guy? You're a team. There's no real life. It's just let's get no, the bite. Yeah. I don't care that my friend, the guy yeah. I'm working with, is being beaten up. Yeah. What a disgusting. They're all they're all scumbag except for the black guy that was just trying to stop the fight. Who was just going to be interviewed? The that people that were being inter interviewed that had the scam going on. Yeah, dirt bags. Reporter, dirt bag. Cameraman, dirt bag. You know, behind the scenes, he probably doesn't like the guy. I'm just speculating here. The cameraman probably doesn't like the guy anyway. Knows that when he goes back to the newsroom, they're all going to be like, great footage, man. That is some great stuff. Look at him. Look at him getting his ass kicked. You think the, you think the reporter said to him, um, <clears throat> why didn't you uh, help me? Yeah, hey, a uh, little help would have been nice. Why didn't you put the camera down and help pull me off? Pull him off me. Right? I, I got to hear the interview with him. They the just showed him sitting in a room in yeah. front of a camera being interviewed Unless with his chick. all just punched to pieces. L let's go to David in Florida. David. Hey, good morning, boys. Good morning, David. Hey, love the show, man. Thanks. I got a little media story. Uh, a friend of mine's um, husband died of a, a pneumonia, just uh, clogged up lungs. And the media kept coming to her house, kept coming to her house and uh, with camera and, and microphone. So uh, the interview was about over, but the guy kept persisting, kept the microphone in the house. We ended up slamming the door on the guy's hand. The microphone was still in the house. Totally cut his wrist wide open, make a long story short. Broke his wrist, went to court. The judge threw it out of, out of court saying, well, enough was enough. You should have had the microphone out of the people's house. Yeah, good. It was good. Got a, got a, a taste of his medicine, and uh, it was a big write-up down here in Florida. And, uh, yeah, I think the media got to get out of people's face, get off their property. and it's uh, Or, or you know, take uh, take the chance. I don't, I don't mind them taking the chance. Yeah. Take Fun to watch. Oh, yeah, and getting their Fun to game. watch. All right, thank you, David. That yeah, was one of the guys, best, uh, one of those shame, shame, shame segments I, I ever saw. <laughs> I wouldn't mind the reporters if they didn't walk around life the way they, they like they have this impunity mm -hmm. and this immunity to any real damage. The way they film outside and get mad when like regular people yell Opie and Anthony whatever into the camera. Yeah, they think they can walk through life like, but they're like they're behind glass. I'm it's a like, newsman. No. You can't touch me. You can't do anything to me. You can't upset my shot. You can't. No, no. Uh, you can get your ass handed to you. Yep. Then this guy was just so sure this this guy would not touch him. Like, yeah. Uh, right as he s says, call the police. Uh, he's standing there with his arms folded across his chest. As somebody's approaching him, about to kick his yeah. ass, 
And you know what the look is when someone's walking toward you that they're going to punch you. Yeah. You don't fold your arms in front no. of you and go, call the police. That might have... I'm a reporter. I, ow. <laughs> that was probably a weird way. That's like curling up when the gorilla comes for you. That's what folding the arms was. Yeah. yeah. He was Look, trying to defend, maybe. Well, no, like try, the, that's the, the unspoken posture of uh, everything's okay. Yeah, don't punch me, please. All right, here we go. Uh, reporter justifies cameraman not doing anything? Yeah. Oh, wow, we'll get to that in a oh, second. Oh, great. All right, we got more audio, though. Here's uh, more of the story. In an investigative series aired on Fox 6 in late July, John Mattis uncovered an elaborate scam allegedly carried out by Sam Suleiman in which he stole identities to buy property and then rent to others. It was a white-collar crime that apparently carried out by a man with a rough neck temper. His Suleiman left several messages with John colored with foul language and threats. I haven't forgotten about you. I think about you every all right, I don't know. I didn't hear that. Yeah, it sounded like, like it was spoken in Russian. Yeah, threatening uh, voicemails. All right, that's all you need to know. So that. he doesn't bring security with him. This smug idiot yeah. who yeah. thinks he's not living in the real world doesn't bring security. I bet they got a promo running on the station where he has sunglasses on and a long trench coat because he's getting things done. Yeah. Yeah. He's an investigative reporter. He's investigating the emergency room, so he had to get in there uh, incognito. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a whole squad of reporters at the station that go out and help him with these things. <laughs> John is just off camera here, playing the messages for Brian Phillips, who's about to share his own story of a violent run-in with Suleiman. Well, that's the when black suddenly, guy. suddenly, Rosa video. arrives on what? scene. You didn't have enough with what you had? Stop the <laughs> camera right now. Throw in the water. Oh, yes, I will. No, Throw in the water. Why are you doing this? You didn't have enough with what you had? While emptying her water bottle, Rosa accuses John of invading her life. Her shouting continues for about a minute when John asks her about the allegations of violence. Why do you have to batter people? Weed? Why do I have to batter me? That's not appropriate. I don't give a don't Stop your behavior. Do you like Tijuana or Ensenada? What? Which one do you like better, huh? Ma I'm going to put you on the other side of the country. that is really pathetic. I don't care. Stop this. That's Stop pathetic. this right now. Have a nice you day. No, have you. Have a nice have day. Have a nice day, my Thank you. Bye-bye. Son of a Oh, the report is so swarmy. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Or smarmy. He's probably sitting there. Oh, well, oh yeah. <laughs> no, he's smug. He's very smug. He's smug, very. Right? Uh, uh, he's just. Ugh. He, instead of going, thank look, you. Instead of just being the reporter and holding the microphone out, letting her talk. Yeah. He's he's got the, he's editorializing. Yeah. Hmm. Why do you batter people? Yeah. Why am I about to be battered? He's probably sitting there. I'm getting great footage. I can't wait. This is good stuff. Edit this for the evening news. Hope my hair looks good. Right. Photojournalist Dennis Waldrop, who has been recording the entire scene, follows Rosa, and she lashes out again. Stop it! <laughs> Photojournalist. Break the f***ing camera. Now, with at least two acts of physical assault recorded, Rosa's husband, Sam Suleiman, arrives. Here comes Rosa Sam. I'm not going to stop. Call the police. <laughs> That's the cheap shot, right? Yeah. Now they're on the ground. The injuries inflicted by Suleiman would become quickly apparent, but Phillips and Waldrop come to John's aid and are able to hold Suleiman down. While Rosa says she's getting a gun. She returns without one, but threatens to use what appears to be a rock until she is stopped by a bystander. Appears to be a rock. That family, those the married couple, should just be executed. Oh yeah, they're just despicable. Yeah. Oh, of course uh, they are. Everyone in this scene, except for the guy that jumped in to help, is yeah. a despicable human being. Yeah. And then the police show up and they got their guns. Yeah, the guy had his gun out. One of the cops nice. uh, had the guy sprawled on the ground, uh, and the reporter got up just bloody. Six yeah. minutes after Sam Suleiman's initial attack, police arrived. Get out of front of you. Officer, he's been over. Back up. Is this there? This is him. Okay. Turn around. Turn around. Get the camera. Get on the ground. Get on the ground. Is that bitch the telling the cop what to do? Yeah. Get the gun off Sam of my husband. Suleiman and his wife Rosa were arrested. John Mattis was taken to an emergency room for a series of tests. A series of tests. Who are they filming What? Now? I'm being an idiot? Huh? Oh, they were filming something. I thought it was more of this guy. Uh, yeah, he's a, they're just scumbags. Well, here's the answer to your question. Uh, reporter justifies cameraman uh, not doing anything. All right. He Let's was, hear. No, he's a photojournalist. Photo photojournalist. This was on the Today cameraman Show just a few indeed. minutes ago. Give them a little credit here. Why did your camera person just keep on rolling, and why didn't that person put the camera down and come over and help you? 
Well, I think that we all have a professional responsibility to <laughs> do what our jobs are. I'm there as a journalist. He's there to record the event and to protect the event. And but for him recording this, we would never have known what transpired there. Yes, we could have turned this into a barroom brawl off camera. That's not what this story is about. This story is about this man terrorizing people, and that's what we tried to document. We had no idea we were going to be part of this. Story. Yeah, I know, but six minutes, John. I mean, you could say to your cameraman, "Okay, I think we got all the evidence we need. A little help here, guy." Well. I think he did what he was supposed to do and stood by his profession, which was to protect me and record what was going on. See, there you go. I'm glad you got beat up. Yeah. Instead of being a real human being and going, I know, I don't know why he did that. Put the camera down. Help me out here. I like how he says, yeah, we could have turned it into a barroom brawl. Yeah. yeah, let me tell oh, you. Oh, yeah, you're real tough now. All right, you you, you supply the blood, yeah. and the other guy <laughs> right. will supply the brawl. <laughs> yeah, nice and cocky now on the Today Show. Yeah. yeah. The whole world is uh, watching you get your ass kicked on YouTube today. And you didn't throw a punch. At least Matt Lauer, did, that was Matt Lauer, right? Yeah. He did call him out on it. He goes, well, I like, yeah, like, I like Matt Lauer. He's ballsy. He did, like six he did, uh, minutes. Yeah, six minutes, John. At like, some point, yeah, you don't need all six minutes. We could have turned it into a barroom brawl. Yeah, could you? Could you? Sure. Matt was talking to him. Yeah, you're going to be the bar stool. His cameraman, actually, he wasn't talking to Johnny, he was talking to his cameraman. He was going six minutes. Basically, he was saying, if that ever happens, film for two seconds and put it yeah. down. Yeah, get a quick still shot. What a jerk off. I'd love to talk to that cameraman. A lot of cameramen uh, checking in. Brad in Atlanta, make it real fast. We want to get a Good few morning, people in boy. here. Go. Hey. All, all I got to say is that this is what cameramen live for, right? Because behind the scenes, these guys treat us like dirt. <laughs> really? <laughs> when it happens, it's great because that's their whole job. They just stir up crap with people, and we get to just look at it, and it's awesome. Anyway, punching out, boys. You got to take care. Everyone is saying Later, that. Let's man. go to Mark in Jersey. Mark, make it fast. Hey, Owen. What's going on? Hey. 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 The reporters hate the cameramen, and the cameramen hate the reporters. Okay. And secondly... If the cameraman would have stopped rolling and helped the reporter, he would have freaked out because it would have ruined his shot and it wouldn't have been able to go on his demo reel. Yep, there that you go. Is. There you go. Mm -hmm. William in Dover. William? Hey, yeah, man. What's going on? Hey, make hey. it real quick. The, um, I, I think the cameraman probably didn't do it. One, yeah, like everybody was saying, you know, they, they don't like each other. But also, I mean, if, he, if he'd have broke that camera over that guy's head, man, he'd have had to pay for it. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Fire. As a cameraman, if you really liked the reporter, like if you guys were buddies, would you have helped him? Hello? Yeah, yeah. You there? Yeah, this yeah, guy's not a cameraman. Oh, you're not a cameraman. All right, All right. I got another cameraman on the phone. Uh, Dave in Boston. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey. Good, Dave. Good. Actually, I'm a, I'm a producer in Boston, and I know for a fact that photographers uh, are actually told to keep rolling just for down the road. Any, you know, if there's any possible litigation, you know, they can be sued, but the proof is on the tape. So if they stop rolling and something really serious happens, where, you know, like injury or someone's killed... The, you yeah. know, the proof is on the tape. Understand that. But you put the camera down on the ground and you go, help. The event is real life. The real life event is happening. We lost a guy who said well, that if they the stopped guy... rolling, they would get fired. In Pretty most much. cases. Yeah, and I, what, what, that, what that cameraman was saying earlier, too, I'm not sure if that was a cameraman, too, but half the time they're going out and shooting things that are like, here's a, here's a daisy picking here, here's something boring. Half the time they're shooting stuff that is so boring. Yeah. Uh, this guy, this must have been the, 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 the event of his life. All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, they Thanks. just, uh, you know, keep rolling. Everyone uh, wants to know where they can find the video. It's on your local TV uh, station, but where is it on YouTube? Uh, we can link it to the site if you want. All right, we'll link yeah. it to copianethony.com. I don't know what you're throwing in that search. guy getting his ass kicked. San Diego Great. reporter might, uh, might get the job done. Yeah. Try that. You want to do the chicken story then? The there's, shame on you chicken story? There's a chicken story. Well, we, did you see the video of the reporter getting beat up yet, Otto? No. Oh, my God. It's a video It of is the day. so good. Oh, good. It is so good. Oh, show Otto. It's a fit. Oh, I love a good thumping. <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of those nosy reporters that has to get into your business. Oh, God. The, you yeah, know, it's one of those reports where, you know, they're going to uncover investigative reporter. And weren't you uh, mm -hmm. trying to sell real estate and swindle people? Yeah. And uh, usually the people just kind of put their hand up against the camera and go away. Oh, yeah. Well, these people didn't go away. Good. The dead oh. And, and they uh, attacked this uh, reporter and just beat the shit out really? of him. Really? In New York? Oh, yeah. And the no, camera. San Diego. Oh, wow. San Diego. 
and the cameraman just filmed it. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Didn't put the camera down <laughs> and help his buddy there. Well. Just filmed him being beaten. Nice. And the guy just didn't do anything to defend himself or, or anything. He laid there and allowed this guy to punch him in the face and kick him. Well, Jimmy, wow. you made a good point today, too, that, that if the if the person's hateable, too. See, the good thing about this is when the person's also, you know, at least theoretically guilty, yeah. then it's you. It's everybody's detestable. Yeah. And then you yeah. really, let's face it, you want to see some somebody, somebody get something. Someone's got to yeah. get hit. The only guy I like in this whole story is... Is the black dude who I think was a neighbor that they were going to interview because he's yeah. the one that pulled this guy off. Oh. Master Poe, I was thinking of when I saw this, cause like how easily would would he or Kenny have fended this? Oh, watch this. Dispatch. Watch this. The, the, it's the, the video of the day. Uh, it's a roundhouse punch. <laughs> yeah, this guy comes over. Wow. Just what do you unloads. think of that, Otto? What wow. do you think of that? He's it really is, mad at him. Wow, he's, he's choking yeah. him. He's choking him. At his <laughs> face. He chokes him, throws him to the ground. There's the no guy's audio. already bloodied. Wait till they see. Now, uh, that's the guy's wife. There's yeah, no we, audio? Yeah, 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 there is. There oh, is, boy. Did you don't hear much. He's your hump, hump. Yeah, looks like, like Ed hump. Begley Jr., that guy getting <laughs> oh, pummeled. Wait for the kick to the face coming up. You I see think. his bloody head turn around because <laughs> he's completely bleeding. Looks like Eric. And then wow. he gets kicked in the face. Wow. All right, well. In these they didn't court show papers, oh. they were kind of an awful oh, because they wanted to show it again. Yeah, here. <laughs> his wife is all uh, uppity, throwing some water into the camera. And that's good enough uh, video right there. They could have done something with that, but the guy got greedy. A black woman would have jumped into the fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> throwing water. That's my man. Throwing water on that's the reporter. That's my man. Yeah. And the reporter's all smug with her. Hey, Very way, nice. well, now, well, you were swindling people. That's uh, pathetic. Why do you have to get violent? Watch, here comes the <laughs> husband any second now. The, if she's if she's holding her own though, right there. She's a cunt too, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah we we think they're dirt bra uh, dirt bags as well. Identity but. theft. Oh, and what's really? he putting the oh, hand out for? Oh, shake your hand. He's just trying to goad her. He's yeah, goading her. No, come that's, on. That's greed right there. Now, yeah. Yeah. And we here comes the hubby. greed. Now here comes the husband. Well, she can now. She got to throw some things. My oh, husband has a gun. You <laughs> 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 may have fired it while you were yelling. <laughs> right. Here comes the husband. What did this? What did this fucking guy do? This guy's oh, yeah. had enough. He's of on a mission. Watch, he doesn't even. Hey, oh, wow. I'm just gonna punch oh, wow. him in the face. Oh, oh, oh. He got three good shots in before any. Wow. That guy knew what he was doing as he was driving up to the house. He knew he was gonna punch yeah. this guy. He said he just slams him. To look the at the cameraman again. keeping him in frame. Look at now look how bloody his face is. That was a kick and, to the face. And, yeah, he gets a kick look to the, the face. Can't even get up. He only has wow. one leg around him. The guy's keeping him down with his leg. One good leg. The reporter can't get to up. He is beaten. And then the cops show up. And uh, yeah. they, they draw their guns. She's a cunt. Look at this oh, look at, oh, oh, nice. Oh, poor Hit little reporter. yuppie face. It's great. <laughs> that, isn't that fantastic? <laughs> There's nothing better than a good beating. <clears throat> oh, God. Who's the guy laying down? That's the guy doing the punching? Yeah. Yeah, he's a jerk off, though. He, he's like oh. a th identity thief. Yeah. yeah. Nice cheeks. He ripped his jacket, too. <laughs> Definitely dirt bag. You know how embarrassing it is to get beaten up by a guy who's wearing a suit? Oh, man. Yeah, a guy was wearing a cheap suit. <laughs> Came over and just roundhoused them. Love, <laughs> love the guy's technique, though, man. He was on a mission. It was such a sloppy punch. Are we done quoting the movie Arthur? I had a good one. Which one? Oh, no, it's, well, you forget the moose for a moment, <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> Do you know what I can't stop thinking from Arthur? Susan loves you. I love you. Uh, yeah. My <laughs> father-in-law is great. He's psychotic. I picked up a knife and I killed him in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I killed my first man when I was 13. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go watch that movie again. I don't now. like your drinking, Arthur. Right. You must have hated that moose. <laughs> yeah. Could you forget the moose for a moment. Arthur. He's taking yeah. the knife out of the cheese. You think he wants oh, some man. cheese? That movie's an instant classic. That's yep. great. great. Right. And then they had to clean them off for the second one. Oh, they wrecked it with the one second one. Just, what a stupid idea. idea. Just as bad as Caddyshack and Caddyshack 2. Caddyshack 2 is a great sequel. Oh, is it? shut up. Are you kidding? Actually, he is lying. Marsha Warfield Orly. He was in that, right? Yeah, he was crazy. Yeah? What, did it suck? Oh, it was so bad. Oh, it hung upside down. It had his throat open like a sheep. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> E-Rock's got the clips from Caddyshack 2. Oh, wow. 
The Dan Aykroyd stuff. Does he? Can he find it real fast? <laughs> yeah. He has him on his fucking video iPod. Them. He watches yeah. him and laughs. Dan wow. Aykroyd doing a horrendous Bill Murray. Yeah. Well, it's like everybody who didn't get cast in the first one. Yeah. yeah. So they kind of tried everybody to cast him. Like, yeah, so get that guy. Oh, yeah. So it's like, well, we couldn't get Bill Murray. We'll get Dan Aykroyd. That's good enough. He'll be just we as couldn't good. get Rodney. So we'll get, uh, who'd they get? Jackie Mason. Jackie Mason. <laughs> Wait, just horrible. And Chevy Chase has seen stunk. Yeah. I would say, yeah, and two. Never found him funny. No, nah, not particularly. He had a couple of moments. Like, a couple talk, of moments and a couple to, of um, movies. Rick Messina and um, the, Tim Allen's got some movie out, and uh, Rip Torn and Chevy Chase are in it. And Rip Torn punched Chevy Chase right in the face on the set. <laughs> Why? Just for being himself and being a jerk. <laughs> to him. He was making fun of his age or something, but this is right from the horse's mouth that he just dropped him. Wow. He's like 75 years old. Wouldn't you have loved to have seen that? Yeah, yeah. Chevy Chase get punched in the face by an old man. I would love to see that him God. punched in the face by anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm hell? Chevy Chase, and you're... Yeah. What <laughs> moment did Chevy just go into the tank? What mm. was it? I don't know. Was I it Flash 2? The vacation movies were good and yeah. stuff, but I don't know. I His show, his TV show. It's just not a really funny That's person. Oh, that, that was that, it. That, that was put it. him like... Yeah. That was... That yeah. was what did him in, was his TV show yep. when he was doing like rubber band races with the rubber bands on his face. It was oh. just dreadful. Yeah. Jeez. And I think if he showed like what a fucking just an ass this guy is. Yeah. But he had come off as an ass before that, like in, in public appearances on interviews, things like that. He just... Uh, you thought he was like some cool, hip guy who no, was really funny on SNL. And then uh, you're like, wow, this guy's a real ass. But see, Very like for four ass. minutes, like an appearing as a guest, you can be funny. When it's all your show, yeah, you're yeah. going to be revealed. Now yeah, there's trouble. That's true. Right. We almost uh, met him at Donny Deutsch mm -hmm. when he was wearing his pink sweater. Really? Oh, but he didn't want to meet anyone. No? Oh, no. God. No, he didn't want to meet anyone, even though we're in the same room getting makeup done. They really? said he didn't want to meet anyone? Oh, yeah. He was really? the, the yeah. biggest prick. I would have walked right up to him. In his pink sweater. Ah. Yeah. What an ass. And then he just went on the show, and it was just him babbling. Wait, uh, in the same room? Yeah. In the yeah. same room? Oh, yeah. Like, don't look at Chevy, don't oh, look yeah, at Mr. Yeah, Chase yeah. in the eye? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that type of thing. Okay. Nothing. It's like, all right, whatever. He thinks he's who the fuck he is. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do the shame on you? Shame, 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 shame on you. Well, because, you know, that reporter that got beat up, he was yep. doing kind of one of these shame on you things. Yep. Mm -hmm. Being a busy buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nosy. Just a nosy. A nosy Nancy. Nutch. Just a nutch. <laughs> Keep your <laughs> nose out of other people's business. Look, the people in that fighting video, yes, dirtbags, but the reporter just being a, just a... Douche. The big picture was the reporter needed it. I'm going to look inside my new Mac case. Ooh, I could put something in there. Oh, nice. Ooh, some pedophilia films, perhaps. Enough about the MacBook. <laughs> <laughs> my head is squashed like an eggplant. <laughs> Not going to use Seafelt's head. <laughs> well, we got a great one from New York here. Shame on you is the show. Uh, Arnold Diaz. That they do in New York. Shame, 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 shame. Well, he went after uh, chicken. Ew. Chicken. Chicken that's labeled grade A, oh. and it's not grade A. It's grade B? It's grade like B. Shame on them. <laughs> right. You know, you make a good point. It's, it's close enough. Who cares? When you go to the supermarket, you're picking out the best looking one anyway. You know, you don't want the little feathers in there, right. and you don't want it to kill you from salmonella. Right. right. Anything else? You want to cook it. It's just chicken. cook it. Right. <laughs> you want to cook it. That's it. Well, he thought it was important enough to do a whole segment. You know what? Shame Some on you. Some people are selling chicken marked grade A when it actually is grade B. <laughs> we took our hidden cameras. Did oh, you? Hope a chicken punches him <laughs> in the face. Yeah. Just bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to see. I want to see him walk into a synagogue and go, shame, shame, shame on you for killing our Lord. <laughs> 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 well, here he goes. Uh, he's off. All right. All he gets right. into the Fairway supermarket. Oh, it's a jazzy version. Fox 5 has caught Fairway, one of New York City's most popular supermarkets, playing fast and loose with the labeling on its chicken. Take a look at these leg quarters. The label says Grade A, and Fairway's employees told me what it says is what you get. Are these Grade A? 
It is grade A. It is grade A? Grade A is a quality designation that's only supposed to be used by government inspectors. The USDA has very specific specifications on what the grading grading is and what an A, B, and C equals, and they're, they're very particular about that. On these Purdue chicken leg quarters we bought at another supermarket, you can see the real USDA grade A label. But you won't find that government seal on the quarter's fairway labels grade A. Oh, my God. Boy, there really was nothing to investigate oh. that week, was there? <laughs> wow. It's been a picky Pete. Exactly. Such colored band-aids may be killing you. <laughs> <laughs> How about... It'd be funny to see them do, like, a really serious story with shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Whatever the guy's name is, has been accused of raping and murdering a child. <laughs> Now that's shame. <laughs> kind of an awkward non-laugh from everyone. <laughs> Figured I'd go for the gusto. I, I almost I swung so hard and missed on that one. I pulled a back muscle. <laughs> you look like Dave Kingman on that one. Oh, is that uh, Josh, nice? yeah? look at you guys. You guys look are just at that because he swings nice. really hard. And he that, did. That's terrible. Struck I'm out sorry. And he often missed. <laughs> that was hit a lot of homers, but he also struck out a lot. If I connected on that one, dude, it would have fucking bounced off the roof. Unfortunately. No. <laughs> God. The grade A labels are fake. All uh, right. There's more of the story. I hope there is. Fairways meat manager Ray Venezia, who's pictured here on the company's website, would only speak to me by phone. You messing up my packages. Earlier, a meat department worker tried grabbing out of my hands one of the chicken packages in question. Sorry, you're not going to buy it. You can't stand here manhandling it. I could have held on to it. Not if you're not going to purchase it. Employees did tell us on two separate occasions that the leg quarters are delivered to Fairway in these large boxes from Mount Air Farms in Delaware. But get this. When we oh. called Mount Air, we were told the chicken in those boxes is lower in quality and uh. cheaper than grade A uh. and hence does not come with a grade A shield. Hence. So why is Fairway repackaging that chicken and uh. Slapping a great A on the label. We check with Mount Air, and they said they do not make chicken leg quarters that are grade A. The meat manager said he'd have to get back to me. The meat manager later told me it's true that Fairway's chicken quarters are not government certified grade A. He says Fairway puts its own grade A on the label based on the store standards. <laughs> the problem is, for one thing, that's a violation of the labeling law. What a douche. This that guy... is pretty funny, though. That's ballsy for the store. Look. Uh, the government's grade A. We don't abide by that or something. But we have our own, and these definitely cut it. These are grade A. But has he they never like, their own standard? Has he never eaten out? You know yeah, when I they know. when they give you the specials, you think they they went and bought yeah. that special for you? Oh, that's nobody a... was eating that stuff four days ago. So now we're gonna put a different yeah. sauce on it. And and we're gonna really call it the special. Yes, are usually. But, uh, but as the, the older uh, stuff, as a customer, you go to Fairway, let's say, and you get chicken, and you have a, not a bad experience because uh, there's not a lot of stories about people getting sick. But chicken. you you go home and you you cook your chicken. You're like, you know what? This wasn't that great. Yeah. Would you just go somewhere else and find yeah. a better chicken? Nah, see, but like in the, the making grade A chicken. What do you? What does that even mean? Do you mean, look really? at the grade yes. of the chicken when and you I buy it. And I trust Fairway because if you ever see those employees, they know chicken because half of them use them in religious rituals. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm going to treat myself to an almond after that one. You just, <laughs> you just look at a chicken. You look at it and go, that looks good. That well, looks chicken. I'm just no blood, no vein. I'll right. buy it. No little feathery no little hair the, yeah, things exactly. poking out. Exactly. And then you buy it. It's chicken. I'm not looking grade. That's probably grade A. Well, this is what they found in the fairway chickens. Uh oh. By the way, I have a Secondly, question. a close. Yes. You ever eat a shrimp and see that little black line? Is that yeah. the shrimp shit? That's yeah. shrimp yeah. shit. Yeah. It's yeah. It's supposed to be shrimp shit. You gotta, you gotta get that out. Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta. I don't want shrimp it. duty. Yeah. yeah, I do pull it out. Shrimp logs. The second an animal is <laughs> slaughtered, it starts to decompose. You have yeah. to just cook it immediately. Right. You know, as soon as you get it home, cook it. Yeah. yeah. You don't want it sitting there rotting. It's, it's a dead decomposing, animal. Decomposing. Yeah. Fucking dead animal in your house. Yeah. Shrimp's last meal, just sitting there waiting to be eaten. Yeah. Now you got to get that deveining tool right. and mm. stick nah. it through in your cock hole. <laughs> it's a fork. <laughs> Too much work. Just eat the damn thing. I don't want shrimp duty. Secondly, a close look at the chicken raises serious questions about Fairway's standards for grade A. Fairway told Fox 5, we carefully inspect for blood spots, tears, discoloring, blemishes, and immediately discard any on, chicken on the that employees. fails to pass this rigorous examination. But we saw lots of what appeared to be blood spots on Fairway's chicken quarters, so we opened one package to take a closer look. 
not only is there obvious discoloration, red spots, yellow blotches, and hard black nodules, but there's also ah, a tear in the chicken nodules. and what appear to be remnants of feathers, not a tear in the chicken. And a nodule. Okay, I don't want a chicken with a nodule. No, remnants of feathers. That's feathers. chicken cancer. Yes. <laughs> Could I have a nodule McNugget? Remove ass juice from shrimp before handing <laughs> yeah. to Norton. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's already penciled that down. Debowel the shrimp. <laughs> but don't you just take that chicken back and say, uh, you know, yeah, or just never go. You know what? Feed it to I, the rack I would apartment. assume that people that are shopping there probably are from a lower income bracket. Mm. Fairway's good, isn't it? I've never heard of the yeah, fucking place. Yeah, on Broadway, it's a good one. It's actually Shut really up. No, fairway's a good one. I shop in suburbia. Wait, the fairway near the fairway. The fair, I go to There's a fairway up in uh, 125th, and then the fairway down there on the Upper West Side. Uh, Smack down. Hopefully it's one on 125th. You know what I go to? It's something called the supermarket. Yeah. Mm. It's a market. That is super. That was a great thing. You go, you go it to is. the. That's where you I go. go to the meat place. It, it's like a showcase of meat. No, fairway's good. That's <laughs> why. That's why this it is really surprising. Is. It food really Emporium, I actually prefer about all of them. Sounds Fairway fantastic. Is, is well known. Food Emporium, because I like their song. You know what I don't like about New York City? Beautiful uh, Mount Airy Lodge. Ooh, that Beautiful. is a lovely one. <laughs> is that in the you Poconos? Know? Yeah. I don't like the little shopping carts because oh. because they're so small. Uh, the the supermarkets here in New York City are not supermarkets. I like wide lanes in the supermarket. Yeah. Huge, giant, big meat section with a butcher there. What can I do for so you? Like a goose step. <laughs> exactly. Up and down the aisles as you get your in Cheerios. In suburbia, your it's <laughs> wonderful. Mm. And your <laughs> schnitzel and your sauerkraut. Right. And just a line <laughs> of cashiers. <laughs> no waiting. Some retard bagging for you. I would love to live it's, in It's somewhere. paradise I'm out there, people. Paradise. Yeah. I wouldn't mind if I come in and do spots and I can't. Um, oh. Hey, uh, Doug has a very good observation from Minnesota. Doug. Doug. Hey, uh, Jimmy doesn't like shrimp duty, but hooker duty's okay? That a boy, Doug. Wait, no. just, just set the record straight. He has his hookers deveined also. <laughs> <laughs> Runs one of those knives up their back. <laughs> you hear Doug do a fruncus? Yeah. Oh, he did a fruncus. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the blood spots and the feathers of this poor chicken. That It sounds like it's been raped or something. Notches and hard black nodules. But there's also a tear in the chicken and what appear to be remnants of feathers not completely removed from the skin. This was all on one piece. Three of the four pieces in the family pack had some or all of those problems. While we're not poultry experts, there was an obvious difference when we compared Fairway's product with Purdue's leg quarters that are U.S. SDA certified grade A. His voice Gee. is driving me nuts. He's horrible. So it's bringing me back to like high school. Top. Over wanna, the top. You want to pick up a feathery chicken leg with a nodule and just slap his fucking mouth with it. With a nodule. You know, it's something you think about too, because I was a writer before I went to TV about a year ago, and you think like, you know, do you you, you got to figure out a voice. You got to go do that to your voice, yeah. and he's always talked like that. The there were obvious nodules, blood spots, and a yellow. Th no one Does talks he like talk that. like that. We're not poultry experts. Well, perhaps you should have brought one with you. Wouldn't it have been good to get exactly. a poultry right. expert? Then maybe I would listen. Yeah, and say like, "Hey, look, there's some stuff on here," and then the poultry guy could have maybe you never know gone. Hey. Yeah, it doesn't look as good, but as far as eating this, it's fine. It's he it makes it sound like obviously this will give you some form of cancer. Where's an identity thief when you need one? I'm not <laughs> an oncologist or a chicken expert or a an astronaut. But I am a douche. I'm also not a race car driver, a dentist, <laughs> or a pilot. I'm not an hour later. Or, I'm not a beautician <laughs> or a real reporter. I'm <laughs> just an asshole. A nudge. What do you think he was like in high school? A complete just hall monitor. Telling on everyone. <laughs> telling on the AV kids that are trying squad. to smoke a little pot in between periods. Well, that's, that's, AV this squad thing, exactly. on the safety this patrol. Thing sounds like an AV thing. All right, one last story here. Teen beat with his own prosthetic leg. We do this and then we get out of here for today. Well, first we laugh. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the story. <laughs> the beating of a Cape Girardeau high school student has shocked the community. Like a teenager Steve. wears an artificial leg and has a deformed arm. Police say his assailants <laughs> tore the leg off him and used it as a weapon. News Channel 5's Randy Jackson spoke with a teenage victim. 
I've got a prosthetic leg. Here. 18-year-old Michael Williams says it was his handicap that made him says. a victim early Sunday morning. Williams, a senior at Cape Girardeau Central High School, was attacked in the parking lot of his apartment complex. One guy came up, hit me, and all I remember after getting hit was hitting the ground. Williams, who was born without part of his right arm and leg, was unable to defend himself. His friends watched in horror as two assailants used his prosthetic leg as a weapon. Wait, they took it off of him and they actually chucked it at his chest and it hit him like right here. His that, friends. That's terrible. I'm sorry. His friends watched and watched. They, they, Did they guy, have cameras? He's an armless, legless gimp, and they're watching him being beaten up with his own prosthetic oh, that's leg. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. Horrid friends. Listen what they uh, listen for what they call them. Neighbors in the Sundance apartments where the beating took place were angry. Someone could be so cruel. I mean, that's wrong for them to do something like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't see why they would do something like that. Just say what the world comes to I do days. now. Two subjects drove by, started yelling something at him, got out of their vehicle, continued to yell at him, and started making fun of his um, uh, disabilities, his one arm, calling him nubs. Police investigators say it was the tone of the threat that prompted prosecutors to file felony hate crime charges in this case. Police have arrested and charged 17-year-old Alexander S. Harris with assault in the third-degree hate crime. How is it Another 16-year-old is facing juvenile charges. Justice Williams says for an act of cruelty and hate, others he hopes can learn from. It's a hate I don't handicap. I try to let them get to me. I just let them brush off because I've had to deal with it ever since I was born because this is a birth defect. I'm also hoping when I get to college, a lot of this stuff will stop. Is, is it because he's white? I don't Were the think, attackers I don't black, or black. is it a hate crime because he's handicapped? Yeah, yeah well, because well, maybe he hates one one arm freaks. <laughs> maybe they're charging the the, uh, the cripple guy actually with with hating pairs of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> hating God. That's hilarious. No. Oh, nubs. 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 Crockett and nubs. <laughs> nubs. My Although they said the tone of the threats. How do you say nubs menacingly? Yeah. Yeah. Nubs. I guess you just sing songs, say it, nubs, and then you beat somebody with their own prosthetic. <laughs> Great. All in context. Two laughs. I'm going to ask you two arms and one yeah. leg. Whatever. One, one arm is kind of short and awful. Yeah, half an arm. And, uh, uh, hence, hence, no one laughing. I didn't hear you. What did you say? I was so uh, self-centeredly was, obsessed over my next line. It was horrific. Was it, it, on the it was replay. so bad. What did you say? Come on. It's no worse than the bomb I had before. That was should have had Enola Gay on it. I said he... <laughs> It's a hate crime because he hated one arm freaks. Oh, instead of, oh, one, instead leg of one leg freaks, yeah. I might have got at least a chuckle. All right. Uh, we were trying to get to this yesterday. Why don't we do it today? Man holds girl hostage in dungeon for eight years. A little twist on this story. Yeah? Yeah. Why? She might be pregnant by this guy. Oh, my God. Is that the update? Oh, That's the update. Threw himself under a train. Wait, who the guy, the uh, the the kidnapper? Yeah. Um, do I have a copy of this, my sweet angel? She was yeah. eight years old, or something like that, or ten years old. Right. When he grabbed her up, somewhere in Germany. Yeah, das gut. And then uh, kept her in some dungeon he built underneath his house. Oh how did they survive? What did I? He, he fed her. There was like an apartment down there, no windows or anything, but oh. it was like an apartment, and and she would clean. And you know, cook and as and he would go down and, clean, and have sex with her. Did he homeschool her? <laughs> and uh, she had books, she had things you know, so she was learning, and uh, kept her down there for eight years. And who? How was he related? Was he related? Did he know her at all beforehand or no? Uh, I don't think so. I think just kind of a maybe a neighborhood acquaintance type thing. But she was so well hidden in in his house underneath you know the floor, and she escaped. She finally, yeah, he started. Eight years, he started loosening up the security a little bit, thinking that you know she was there. Yeah, and she actually feels bad that he killed himself. When did he kill himself? Right, it's yeah, like right when Stockholm syndrome. She, yeah, they, that's what they call it. What is Stockholm syndrome? When you fall for your captor, you you have to die to the captor. She's going through it right now. <laughs> what? Me? Being yeah. married I'm gonna to escape. you? I'm gonna escape. Yeah, she's gonna escape in two years. Do you know that's okay. one of the tortures in the torture chamber? Is yeah. very rich fault. <laughs> <laughs> Worse than the pair. <laughs> Let's get to the audio. This is a pretty interesting story. He's the luckiest father in the world, he says. After eight agonizing years, the child he thought he'd lost is found alive. Wow. 
the luckiest. I know. <laughs> luckiest. <laughs> that would have happened. Puppy, puppy, legal. <laughs> Her first words were, "Puppy, I love you." She came to me and we hugged. It was and feeling. Why can't we get a better must translator? <laughs> It's going to say something about the Jews, I think. <laughs> He's blaming the Jews for all this. Why does the translator always have to be monotone, though? <laughs> it doesn't matter what the Germans are saying, man. Yeah. They built a dungeon. Yeah, built a dungeon. We well, saw smoke, but we did not know. Well, the, f the whole town. The father's, um, I guess he thought she was dead. How far was she kept from home? Did, did it say that? Mm, at I don't all? know. Counting going underground, or? No, I mean... <laughs> We'll live and learn here. First words were, Puppy, I love you. She came to me and we hugged. Oh, it was a feeling I can't even describe. When Natasha Kampusch was abducted in 1998, she was just 10. For all of her teenage years, Natasha was held in this cramped dungeon with a bed, a sink and a toilet. She was given some children's books, but little else. Well, this is the house in Strasshof where Natasha was held for more than eight years. You can see there are police outside now guarding the entrance. Most of the time she was held securely under lock and key. But over the years, the man she came to call her master became increasingly careless. And eventually she saw an opportunity to escape. This is the man police say imprisoned her, 44-year-old Wolfgang Pricklapil. Neighbors say he was quiet and polite. <laughs> Walter Natasha's Gang's escape, he pill. threw himself under a train. <laughs> Naughty Natasha. Yeah. Well, there's a new name up for wow. grabs. Who's going to get it? Wolfgang. Prick, prick pupil. Prick a pill. Prick a pill. <laughs> he killed himself hours after she escaped. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, they asked the father uh, how he thought his uh, daughter was yeah. uh, before they found her. Mm -hmm. No, she's dead. Ah, uh, that's true. She was very badly raped, you see. Well, you know what it is, it's the times. Yeah, it might be. A victim of the modern age. Poor, poor girl. Well, she lured... She lured was it. kept ten blocks from her home. She lured... Good her. evening. Oh, good evening. <laughs> Uh, well, ten blocks, that was it, huh? And the man ended up uh, tricking the girl into staying, like Ann was saying. What did he yeah. say? She was part of a slavery ring? Huh? How did he trick her? Because there was a woman named Colleen Stan. This girl at least was ten when she was kidnapped. Colleen Stan from California was kidnapped like this um, when she was like 19 or 20 or whatever. She was an adult. Stupid. And, well, she was kidnapped by a guy and his wife. She was kept in a coffin Ooh. under the bed. Wow. For, I think, seven years they had her. Oh. And yeah, you want to have a claustrophobia? You want to have a claustrophobia? They had a big bed, and under it, they built in a thing that you could close. It was closed in. It had air vents, but she was cuffed for a long time with, like, a, a box on her head, like... Yeah, I think I read about this story. Maybe there's a similar one. It's called a, a perfect victim or something. Um, and for seven years they had her, and they had kids and stuff... And they would go away for the weekend at one time. She almost suffocated because they went away and they forgot. It got to be like over 110 degrees oh. in, in the little car. I don't understand how, how do you people forget that you got... how they did it. They convinced her through like, you know, again, that's an emotional thing. Eventually they convinced her that she was part of a slavery ring and they showed her a contract and he said that he had bought her. And what would happen is she escaped because her family would be killed. And there was a couple of times oh, yeah, she was actually allowed to go back and see her family. And she did and she returned to them. Ah, um, a, she was so oh. fucked up over it. Uh, look her up, Colleen Stan, S T A N, I believe is her last oh. name. How do you not go back with a weapon and just kill them? I know. She eventually did escape. Um, she was she was so psychologically fucking destroyed. Like she really thought she was part of a slavery ring. I guess this guy was good, and after a while, she believed it and thought that her family would be killed, and she never knew. He's like, you know, cops are in on this. She just didn't know. Cops she are in on Didn't she write letters home a lot and stuff, too? Is that oh, well, well, yeah, but that was only once he had allowed her that after years. Hey, nice guy. And then he would go, and she, she actually went home a couple times and came back, and eventually she did escape. She was working. She gave her a job. She went and got a job at, like, a motel doing some kind of a weird, uh, like, uh, fucking maid's job, and she told somebody at the hotel. And they called the police and stuff. And uh, his name was Cameron something, and I forget the wife's name. But the jury said the thing that convinced them was the way Colleen was just completely dead emotionally. Well, yeah. testifying. When she went home, he, uh, her father said, you're so damaged, you can't come here without the box. <laughs> get it? I don't you get don't, it. You don't get it? He kind of gets it. I kind of get it because it's, it's 
kind of a sick thing that the father would make her come back with the box. I, well, you can't return damaged goods oh. without a box. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Seven, wait, for that seven years, did, did they let her out to eat or something? Or no, no, not for seven years. She didn't eat. No, I mean, what I'm saying is, they didn't make her sit near twenty. <laughs> did you feel hours? Shecky Green was bigger than Alan Ting? <laughs> I mean, all kidding aside, that could get to the root of the matter here. Um, yeah. Well, I think for a long time they kept her in a box, in a coffin, with a box on her head and her mouth taped. I mean, you want to talk about claustrophobia? She was kept, she wasn't kept in a room like this. They didn't have that, you know. They kept her, and then one time they finally decided to let her out and chain her to the bathroom. And one of the little kids saw her right back in the box for years. Oh, oh my God! How yeah. and and how long did they go to jail for the rest of their lives? I hope. No, I think time served. They did three months. <laughs> yeah, they had to clean up some garbage on the side of the highway. Could have been yeah. longer than that, Jim. Perhaps yeah. longer than that, Jim. Oh, Mort Saul. Uh. <laughs> yeah, do you feel Mort Saul? I mean, had was he more progressive? Was he underrated? You think? Or, uh... <laughs> he didn't hit the way he was supposed to. And he had a lot of resentment against guys like Will Durst and oh, other political. Up. comics. Why though? Because he was like mm. one of the first political comics. This yeah. rehearsed. Yeah. This, you're, this, no, this, this, this I is knew a, this. A verbal I book report. No, it isn't. I know that off. I just know it. Mort what? Saul or Lenny Bruce? Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce was more edgy. And and more controversial ah, at the time. Yeah. Ward Saul was doing political, which nobody really was doing it, but it wasn't. Wouldn't that it make wasn't him controversial then? No, because it but wasn't. The police, it wasn't weren't the police weren't arresting him and locking him up, and, you know. But the her. subtlety I of a Henry Gibson. <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's on from laughing, Rona Martin laughing with the flower. Yeah, well, remember because he was in high school and that was on. This is what the show is going to be. It's going to be like Rich you so just excited telling that he me. knew something that no one else knew except yeah. for Anthony. But it was it was sounded like book report knowledge. No, it isn't. It's just no what no. What, we, yeah. Well, well you know, Will Durst he had resentment against such modern people. It's like when you end the goods and services when you deliver them. They have to be, <laughs> like, they do a book report. The worst kind of, thing about Mort Saul is he was put under a bed for five years. What am I supposed to say? That's the story about Mort Saul. All right, it's let's not, go to Chris in Pennsylvania. Chris. Chris. Welcome aboard, Chris. Chris. Hey, man. How you doing, guys? Better now. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Jimmy, there's two things about this lady you're talking about. First, she was not allowed to wear underwear and never could close her leg. If she did, she got beaten for it. Secondly, the wife had just as much sex with this woman as the husband did. The wife is actually who picked the woman out. Oh, okay. um, yeah. They were, they, they were uh, <laughs> shopping. They were, they were driving, and she was hitchhiking. And I know the yeah. wife. I, I'm imagining, though, dude, that the wife is so psychologically destroyed by this guy. It's I almost like you are. Carla Bernardo was definitely guilty, too, because she got yeah, involved. How perverted was that? I, I, could, hey, I read the book. Perverted, I jerked off reading the book. Sexy, dude, whatever you want to call I it. I jerked off reading the book. Oh, my God. You are sick. I know. I One know. Time I went to a, the... Um, Who's the guy who ate people? Uh, That's Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. There was a movie about Jeffrey Dahmer, and I was on a date, and the guy, um, in the middle of the movie, and it's a pretty disturbing movie, he goes, feel how hard I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then you married him. How, how were your grades? <laughs> <laughs> now, sometimes, I, I, the thing I didn't like about the, obviously the barbarism of the Bernardo guy was a piece of garbage, but, uh, you know, and the girls he read for all 15, which was, you know, Sickening, but then he killed them. The sister. Them. Well, that's the hot part. The sister sister. They didn't mean to so kill her. Sick. Carla Homolka, uh, uh, her younger sister Tammy. Carla was dating Paul, and Tammy was like 15. And Paul, as a birthday gift, Carla helped drug her sister so Paul could rape her. Yeah. And then uh, Carla went down on her. I know. It's and uh, so they videotaped tough. all this stuff, and they kidnapped two girls, uh, Kristen and uh, Leslie, and they and they they did the same thing. And Paul would fuck her, and she kept having to say, "I love you, Paul. I love you, Paul." It was really perverted. He would piss on her in the hot tub, and all of this was Jesus. filmed. And then Carla cuts a deal because he was brutalizing her. Carla cuts a deal, and this is all in Canada. So there was a media blackout in Canada, and. Um, Go, turns on him. She gets 12 years. He's obviously life without parole. And then they find the videotapes after the deal's been cut, which shows Carla willingly participating yeah, in the proceeds. Yeah. And, although, again, she was a battered, beat-up fucking, you know. Yeah. There's a photo of her. You can always point, run the fuck away. Just stop it. Yeah. I agree. No, no, but I'm saying, like, there was... Uh, like stupid head of Nussbaum there was with a one, big beat-up yeah. face. There was Leave one photo of bitch. her that was just... Like, she had rac raccoon eyes because he yeah. had a flashlight. I mean, he was just... Um, and then we read on one day on the show, there was a contract that some guy had with his wife. Oh, yeah, yeah. Paul made Carla sign a contract like that, and I read it, and it was like, 
I will, when Paul asks for something, I will bring it quickly and happily. I, it was like that funny language, mm. like you'd think it was like a goof. Happily. Happily. Quickly and happily. I will always smile when Paul asks me to do something. It was really great. You know what I noticed uh, a while ago? You're like the rain man of serial killer knowledge. I know, I'm, oh, an, yeah. I'm an ass. She no, because every once in a while we'll go down this road and, and you'll know the names, pretty much the dates. Place, and, the places, yeah. You know, we all know the basic ones, but he knows the names of serial killers I've yeah. never heard of before. Talk about, what was his name? Edwin or Edward Kemper? Oh, uh, well, that's one. Of his, Edmund. That's one of his Edmund favorites. Edmund. Edmund Kemper. That's yeah. uh, Jimmy's favorite. I think he was called the, uh, I want to say the co-ed killer in California. He's 6'6". Six, six. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, wait. That's not your favorite. Which one? Is he the one with the mom? Yeah. He, the mom? Oh, no, that, that's Edmund Kemper. Yeah, where he yeah. decapitated his yeah, mother yeah, yeah, and had, yeah. had the bowling bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then he banged her with his he her head. Well, he off. didn't say he banged her. He said what he did <laughs> oh, was he said, no, no, he had a co-ed head in a bowling bag while he talked to his mother because he hated his mother. And they, he, he murdered his mother. And they said something like, what did you do after that? And his words, I think, were something along the lines of, I humiliated the body. I don't know what he did, but then he decided to call one of her friends. The last murder he committed, he called one of her, her best friends over there, saying that the mother needed him. When the friend came, he murdered her, and then just turned himself in. Maybe but he's... Tarred tar and feathered the body. <laughs> give her yeah. a tarring and feathering. You know, to <laughs> make it funny. I'll give you one more. And this guy I read a book on, and no one's ever See? heard of him. One, no I, one's ever I, heard of this guy. Yeah. I've been and meaning to say this on the show for a long time, that you just know all this stuff. And by the way, Carl and Paul of your hand. did not mean to kill Tammy. She was drugged, and she she overdosed. She choked on her own puke, but they did not mean oh, to kill her. Oh, okay. Then they're great, oh, no, no, which great is kind people of then. But it is sort of a, 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 an incredible love story. I yeah. mean, it's hard to find another person that you're going to get along with like the same Yeah, they really should. Share yeah. the same interests. Yeah, uh, we're going yeah. to rape and kill together. I mean, to find yeah. someone else that shares that. That is uh, sweet. Here's one that was. It's brutal. romantic. This guy was a gay. This is just like the Notebook. <laughs> he was a gay dude. <laughs> gay dude in California. They say they suspect he killed six or something people. No. No, not that oh, one. Okay. Not Richard. Jeep, jeep. Jeep, jeep, jeep. And he would drug <laughs> Marines and shit. He killed men, and he would drug you, and oh, he would pick up know. hitchhikers. But I mean, like manly men. He didn't just prey on like weak people. He would, uh, he was a sexual sadist. He would fucking feed you beer while you, you hitchhiked, and it was drugged. And when you passed out, apparently you woke up, and he would oh, torture boy. these guys. Um, they found guys, like, with the cigarette lighter all burn on their nipples, on their cocks. He put fucking swizzle sticks in their dick holes. Ha, ha, ha. Um, yay, yay. And uh, oh. they found them with tree branches up their ass. He was like a real sadist. Oh. Took hard. Ra Randy Kraft <laughs> was his name with a K. K-R-A-F-T. Oh. Oh. K-R-A-F-T. They, they estimate 60-something people, yeah. Did you ever read any uh, John Douglas books? Yeah, of course. And, ah. and Robert Ressler is the guy that actually coined the term Profiling. serial killer. Yeah, but he was. they fight over who, who came up with profiling wrestler and Douglas. Oh, they're both good. All right, let's... Uh, wow. Uh, let's say hi to Brad in New Jersey. Brad? Hey, guys, what's going on? Welcome hey. aboard, Brad. Great show at the PNC, by the way, last week, guys. Fantastic. Thanks, man. Had a lot of fun. Um, a lot of the New Yorkers are going down on the Philly show, by the way. Uh, lawn seats, $10 for September 9th's show. No problem. Uh, I wanted to add to Jimmy, because I'm originally from Toronto, and he made mention about uh, the Homolka the Scarborough guy. rapist. Scarborough rapist, that's right. He and his wife, actually, she helped him with all the killings, but not only that, he actually, they're... The first person that they killed after his his sister in law, so to speak, they cut her up and put her in cement. Yeah, was that there was either there was Leslie Mahaffey and Kristen yeah. French. Yeah, they, Leslie let me ask, Mahaffey. Look, he knows this is crazy. There was one thing. Well, they, they they were brutal. There's one rumor, and I don't know if this is true, mm -hmm. that to keep them from running, they cut the Achilles so they couldn't uh, get away. I don't oh. know. Oh. Oh, they, yeah, as a matter of fact, fast. they did it on some of them, yeah. They did? Well, they only yeah. kidnapped two. I mean, uh, well, then, he was a two. rapist, but then they... How they, many did they kill all together? Uh, three, including the sister. Yeah, and then they, the they, cement they came apart or something. It didn't quite... Uh, somebody the found Bernardo? Thing? Bernardo's, yeah. Yeah. Even to the point where the Toronto Transit uh, Commission, like the, the buses and stuff, they started it where they would let girls off anywhere they wanted instead of the designated bus stops because it was it was getting to be pretty bad. Oh, okay, so that. you couldn't predict where they were going to get off. Exactly. Carla just got out, actually. She's now out. Uh, oh, good for her. Looking. She cut the deal before What's they found doing? the tape. I don't know. But She's they married to Richard Ramirez. Aww. And his bad teeth. <laughs> they couldn't bring Love her up on any other charges, like, uh, you know, like uh, civil or something like that, you know? After oh, I don't know. I mean, just, I guess not, and they certainly would. Let's say hi to Bill in Vegas. Bill. Hey, I wanted to talk about Arthur Shawcross. I didn't know. Rochester, know right? Rochester, that's right. That was going on when I was up there. I know the name, but I don't know. What exactly did he do? Well, he, he killed a bunch of women. He had his own personal motto. It's not a party without Artie. 
but uh, the one thing I liked about him, he uh, he cut a woman's external genitalia off. He would carry it around in his pocket, and during times of uh, stress or emotional upheaval in his life, he could always reach into his pocket and fondle it and feel good. Sure. Oh, that's great. Wouldn't it get, like, jerky, though, after a while? Probably put like, it in a bag of jerky. I imagine that would be a problem, yes. He, I, I, he, uh, yeah. yeah, he killed hookers in the Rochester area. Wow. Yeah. Like what Joel was his last name? Uh, Shawcross? Oh, Shawcross. I think. Professor so. Shawcross? Was that <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. We're down this road now. Oh, what is this? fine. Gold. People uh, love killing. Je and we got an Just expert in the studio. Je I know this is a long time oh, ago, yeah. Jimmy. Uh, Jeff in Cleveland. Hey, yeah, I want to know if uh, Jimmy knew about Jim, uh, about Jeffrey Lundgren. Your um, cult killer. I'm sorry. Jeffrey Lundgren, Kirtland cult killer, no. uh, formed a he formed a uh, secondary church within the Mormon Church, and then he convinced a few people when they left, he chopped them up and uh, buried them in a barn. And I knew a girl that spent the night with the daughter at the barn like a week before they found the bodies. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, I, thought, I was wondering if you heard of him. No, I no, I mean, I, I've never heard of that guy. Who was the guy that uh, was sending, hey. that was picking up Hitchcock? Not Gacy. He would send out people. I think it was in Texas. He he had he had a barn. He would send out. He was an older guy. And he would send out like two guys to pick up hitchhikers, and he killed like thirty or forty people and buried them in his barn. Oh, I don't know. I just know about Gacy burning them under the house. Yeah, let's go to Spence yeah. in New York. Spence. Hey, Jimmy. Uh, I was wondering, uh, what about Ed Gein? Ed Gein. He's the guy that they is. The, isn't Buffalo Bill based on him? Yeah, I think so. Uh, he's making they did a, a suit. Movie, like uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs was loosely based off of him, and. Uh, they said Psycho is loosely based off him, so there's a whole bunch of like movies loosely based off him. I, I never really heard anything specific. I think on him. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I think there That's was right. the, the quote by him, and I, I could be attributing this to the wrong killer. Uh, it might have been him, or uh, but there was one guy who said that they talked to him, they, they profiled him and spoke to him because that's what these profilers do. They'll talk to you and figure out why did you fucking mm. become this way. And he goes, the first thing I think of when I see a pretty girl is what it would be like to date her, to be her boyfriend, to be with her. And the second thing I think of is what her head would look like on a stick. <laughs> In New Orleans during Mardi Gras. <laughs> that was oh what he said. That was, God. which is, you know, at least he didn't go in the other wrong. order. would be beyond sick. <laughs> at least he went in the proper order. Yeah. I think that was Slayer. a game, though, or game, whatever yeah, you said. Yeah, I, I believe you're correct. Uh, Slayer did a song on them, too. I can't remember the name of the song off the top of my head, but whenever they do a concert, they'll show, like, his pictures and, like, oh, I'm sure it was a power ballad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I dismember you. <laughs> did, uh, did Richard Speck kill anybody besides those nurses, or was it just that one rampage? I think it was just a I, I, That's a mass murder, I think. I, I think it was just them. I don't know much about him. Oh, you see the breasts he grew in prison? Oh, he was a done naughty boy. Let's go to Sean and, and poke with his tits. What Arizona. do you mean? Oh, Sean? Hi. Hey. I, was wondering, I was wondering if you guys remembered that uh, rapist in Buffalo. He was uh, raping long-haired DJs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thanks, the, the scariest night of my life, or morning, whatever. Very good. Did you ever hear that story? I've right, told it a million times. Forget it. It's just <laughs> <laughs> tell really? it as quickly as you can. Go ahead with the least amount of detail, but the most story. But they haven't heard it. I was uh, doing overnights in Buffalo, and I lived like um, le like a block from the station in a brownstone. And it, but it was in a really scary neighborhood. But the building was all right. But we had uh, security, two doors that locked nice, and and then my apartment I usually locked. Come home. I'm not thinking. I think it was like uh, early Saturday morning. I come home and I'm uh, I'm taking a nap or whatever, right? And I go through the front doors and I go upstairs and I go into my apartment and not lock it. Okay. What happens is someone's moving out of the building. Both doors are open. A little backstory: there was a black rapist loose in Buffalo. It was all over the news, all over the news, all over the papers. So I'm sleeping. And I wake up because I feel someone is in my uh, bedroom. I open my eyes. There's a black gentleman inches from my face looking at my face. And I think I had the covers over my head or whatever, but I had long hair. He was looking to see if I was a chick or not. Oh, my God. I open up my eyes. I don't move because I'm like, you know, just don't move. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Scariest day of my life. So I, I open up my eyes and I just say something stupid like, what are you doing here? And I guess at that point I realized I wasn't a chick. Gets up, 
and, and runs out of my apartment. Maybe you, know, you my, handled it well where he didn't freak out because you weren't yelling. And maybe? he had, I, I, I think, he, I, yeah, he had a hood over his head or whatever. But and uh, what are you doing here? Oh. Yeah, and then. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. And I obviously woke up immediately, and now I'm chasing him out of the building because I'm like, you know, is he, what is this, you know? Come back. And then I used to put my wallet and my keys right next to the door. And as I was running out, I'm like, he stole my wallet and my car keys. And that's all I was thinking. Got out of the building to see these dopes carrying a couch out or something. Mm -hmm. And then I get out of the building, and I see him running down the street as fast as uh, he can. And, uh, you know, it could have been the rapist that was loose in Buffalo. Who Were knows? the people moving? Did you ask them oh, if they I saw did. the guy? I, I, did you use the shortest possible description you could? <laughs> Why? <laughs> that's a quick story. What are you going to no, 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 no. He means I mean, he... what are you going to say to the guys carrying the couch? Did you see a gentleman right, right, about right. six foot tall? Yeah. That, or did you just say, hey, did you see? <laughs> <laughs> but these fuckers were moving, and that, you know. And they left the door open. And I stupid enough left my door open that day turned out they didn't get uh hey or whatever didn't get my keys and uh wallet i i had it in my jean pocket or whatever oh, but it was just, scary to wake oh, up your ass this virginity would have been a great story if it started off there was a bisexual rapist in <laughs> buffalo Ooh. dude it was it was uh scary though you never yeah, know man and you know extremely frightening and i right. usually locked the door but I, I wasn't thinking i'm thinking i ah, had the two doors downstairs are, are always locked but of course that day someone had to be moving they broke the into my like our bedroom when i was a little kid there was a fire escape right up and I was in home. I was across the street getting high, smoking pot, and my mother's laying in the bed reading. And this black dude just climbs in the fire escape, goes through my window, and walks into my mother's bedroom. Oh, she just flies past him and runs out the house. Right. So we're sitting there in the house across the street, and we're so high, and we see all these cop cars pull up, and we're like, "Oh fuck! It's we're getting raided!" Right. So we ran and we start ditching all our pot and stuff. And then I find out that they broke in my house. Then they broke in again and tied my grandmother up to the chair. They no. tied, yeah, yeah, they tied my grandmother up. These black dudes tied her up and kicked my dog Frisky. That's what. Oh. They, yeah, they tied her. To Why the did chair. they? What kind of dog was Frisky? It was a little cocker spaniel. It was a dog that liked prime rib. <laughs> Why did they kick Frisky? Frisky. <laughs> Here's a great line. Uh, Jason in South Carolina. Jason. Hey, Steve. What's up, man? Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, why didn't you ask the black guy? What's my problem? You're in my. Fucking house. <laughs> What's my problem? You're in my fucking house. What are you doing in my house? Uh, why dude, not? You guys rock, man. I've never been more scared in my life than when someone came to a help, Opie. Yeah. No, nothing's wrong. Just stay in the living room. I'll handle it. Yeah, uh, Ziggy in DC. What's up? Hey, man. Uh, just a quick little story for you. I uh, had a guy I knew in high school. His mom was telling us a story one time how she. Uh, her, she had a flat tire on the side of the road. This was down in Pensacola, Florida. And a uh, nice gentleman came up, gave her a hand with it, you know, went his way. A couple days later, she looked on the news and saw who the guy was. It was Ted Bundy. Wow. Because oh, you know who wow. that was? Wow. wow. Was Ted Bundy. He didn't fit his profile, I guess. Yeah. On, the, on the instant feedback, Mr. Torrance from The Overlook. Uh, Opie, as guys... As as the guy is running away, I'll fix your English there. Come back. I have marshmallows and java logs. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody, the guy who asked me, Ed Yane, I think one of the guys gave me a note here was Stan. Uh, he was uh, the inspiration for Leatherface. Well, okay. oh, yeah. And uh, Texas Chainsaw. Do you know what? I, uh, Edmund Kemper, man, one of the victims that he, he would pick you up uh, hitchhiking. He lived by a college and didn't murder you. And uh, one time he picked a girl up and he was going to kill her, but he saw her companion, whoever she was with, would kind of look in the street and write something down, so he assumed that they were writing down his car type, just pick it, and he actually let her live, and he dropped her off. Oh. And uh, he told a story. He's like a brilliant guy. He's like a six, I want to say six six three fifty. He's a massive man. And uh, he told one story about how he was he murdered two college girls. He had like both slit their throats, and they were in his car, and he had to talk his way out of the security with them in his car dead oh, like I like they were sleeping that? or something I don't know but he was sleeping a, yeah he's a bright guy is he still alive in oh yeah yeah yeah. where is he what prison I don't, or, I don't know oh, I'm gonna hey, go Rich. home I'm gonna go home and watch cartoons after today's show what what about the um comedian rapist maybe we can tie it in slide in to your Vince yeah Vince Champ he was working colleges and then he would go back to the school that he worked Yako Smirnoff no. <laughs> he Underrated? Raped, he raped the public. <laughs> Scott in Canada, what's up? Hey, Jimmy, I was just wondering if you knew about Robert Picton. No, I don't. He was a serial killer in uh, B.C. 
He was a pig farmer. In that Utah. long ago? Oh, he fed them to the pigs. <laughs> oh, they, uh, he killed yeah, cave he fed, girls. He'd uh, kidnap hookers and kill them and feed them to his pigs. No one and cares about the hookers, really. Yeah, you well, know? it took a long time to catch them because no one did care about them. No one cares. No one the serial them. killer hookers, uh, when they're killing hookers, no one cares. Nah. Yeah. Uh, you find a couple of them in the But they dug up his the farm, and they found, like, something like 60 bodies on his farm. Oh, that's the, that's the one someone was asking me about. One of you guys maybe. Um, yeah, great fertilizer. All yeah. Right. That, let's, uh, let's go to Steve. Hookers really are good fertilizer. That's yeah. true. Hookers? Steve in Florida. Sure. <laughs> hey, do you guys remember Danny Rowling in Gainesville, Florida? Mm-mm. Yeah, he. Uh, yeah, the college students. Yeah, I was a student there in '90 and '91. I played football there, and uh, we had a guy, a uh, black kid that played football, with us, and he was going around the dorm with like a mask and a fake knife, and uh, he got punched in the face by one guy for doing it. So it was a scary time because he. He was mainly killing women, though, but still, it was pretty scary. Do you know most of these guys get caught driving, too? I guess because they drive so much. Bundy got pulled over because he had a Volkswagen with the passenger seat removed and, like, rape kit stuff in it. <laughs> and that greedy dope would have got away because he escaped in Colorado. He, like, would have been fine if he had just stayed in Florida and been a good boy. Yeah, I can't. And Randy Kraft got pulled over driving, and uh, he had a fucking... A guy, a dead guy in his passenger seat with his pants open. So the cops pulled him over for speeding or whatever, and he gets out and walks to the cop car, which is always suspicious to a cop. Yeah. Like, you're hiding something. Yeah, what are you hiding? And they walk up, and who's this? He goes, oh, he's sleeping. He was dead with his Joel fucking... Rifkin's another one out yeah. on Long Island. Was he driving he was, when he got caught? He was yeah. driving. Yeah. He had his little pickup truck with a dead hooker, hooker in the yeah. back. And the cop uh, pulled him over and was like, eh, what you got back there? Ah, dead hooker. Let's do that bit. Remember, we were working on a bit, Rape and Murder, the musical. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you help you me? You were working this? on it. I. <laughs> Just, yeah. I keep. A lot of people think Lenny Bruce opened the door <laughs> for more modern day satirists. Your feelings? Mm, mm. I keep a big butcher knife between my mattress and and and, and, and the box spring, and she didn't know it. And the other night, I go, "Hey, take a look at this," and I pull it out, and I go like that, and I almost jammed it in her eye. Oh, good one. That's great. Very you funny. sleep with a butcher knife. It's, he's an, is he bizarre? He's a why nut, right? Why would you right? sleep with a butcher knife? You could I, kill yourself I know why. rolling over. No, he probably always right. dreams that he's eating kefilte fish. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say hi to John in Pennsylvania. Jesus. John? Hey, guys. Um, this is a question the FBI asks um, every serial killer that they interview, and they get it right on the first try. Let's see if Jimmy can get it right. There's two sisters. They're at their mother's funeral. In walks this guy. They've never seen him before. They don't know him from Adam. The one sister falls madly in love with this guy. Doesn't talk to him, nothing. He leaves. About two weeks later, she kills her sister. Why does she kill her sister? I know that one, too. I've read it. Um, uh, I fucking know that one. You can ask any question. Is it a shrunk gap t-shirt? Is that involved? Wait, oh, oh, is, oh, can you say the beginning part again? There's two sisters at a funeral. A guy walks in, neither's ever seen him before. At their mother's funeral. I'm sorry, right. okay, guy walks in, the mother's funeral, okay, say They've it again. never seen him before, nobody knows him from Adam. The one sister falls head over heels in love with this guy just by seeing him. Yeah. About two weeks later, she kills her sister. Why does she kill her sister? Uh, over the will, I'm annoyed because I've actually read this nope. question. I don't, I can't, I can't recall it, but I don't know. So he would come to her funeral. Oh, so, so he would come uh, back. To the funeral. It's just how they get in. They see how the mind of a serial killer. Oh, wait a minute. She didn't run off with the they guy. They didn't have a relationship. You gotta, you gotta specify. Uh, we assume oh, that when she okay. fell head over heels in love with them, that they were together. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, but that's, but that's a Your serial killer. Would, stunk. I thought that you meant they ran off together and hooked yeah. up, and then he convinced the sister. I didn't understand that. Yeah, uh, she, so, she never, she never knew him, but she, she wanted to see him so badly again, so she could get to know. All right, him. so she killed the sister for the funeral. The sister, so okay, I, I, okay, no, I, I just didn't understand that. Uh, uh, Snopes.com, by the way, says, out, says this is uh, false. What, that? Yeah. Yeah. That question? As far as, you know, asking every serial killer. Okay, I have read that question before. I just didn't remember the answer. Maybe it was asked to one guy. Yeah. And I'll tell you the most disturbing, I think probably the worst account I've ever read from a serial killer, because it was a kid, was uh, they never caught the killer of John Walsh's son. Adam. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was fucking, he thinks it was, I think, Henry Lee Lucas's guy, uh, Otis Toole, uh, and he confessed to it. He said, I did Adam, I killed yeah. him. 
and then he recanted his confession and died of cancer, so they never solved it. But he told the story of how he got the kid and what he did. It, it, it's, look it up online. You'll find it somewhere. It's the a fucking horrific. worst thing I've ever read. Horrific. All right, a couple more of these. Let's say hi to Brandon in South Carolina. Just keeping it light and fun today. Yeah. Whose dick isn't hard? Jimmy. I challenge you. <laughs> Jimmy, have you ever heard of Pee Wee Gaskins? Nope. No, wait. Researched it. He traveled up and down the coast of uh, low country South Carolina, picking up hitchhikers. He just would do shit like cut girls' nipples off and make them eat them. Just uh. nasty crazy shit. I think now people start getting like, a little, yeah. w when we get into this subject for any length of time, they start getting like, yeah, did you hear this one? And then you look on Snopes and all of a sudden, ah, it's bullshit. I don't know who Pee Wee Gaskins is. All right, let's try one more. Jeff? It's a nipple? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, boys, a uh, question for Jimmy. Uh, have you ever heard of a, a guy named Casey Martin out of Tampa that kidnapped a girl named Amanda Brooks back in the late 80s? Uh, kidna if she was 15, he kidnapped her from a bus stop, and if she ended up falling for him and wouldn't leave, and uh, 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 long story short, uh, she had lived with her grandparents, and about nine months after the whole deal had done, her grandparents had come up dead. Uh, they didn't pin them together. And then uh, a Burger King manager had come up dead. Well, once they finally figured everything out, uh, they put it all together. She went back and confessed to everything that she had killed her grandparents because he needed gas money to go to work and then ended up killing the Burger King manager because he got passed over for a raise. And, and she claims that he had brainwashed her to believe that she wouldn't get in any trouble for all this because she was a minor. Uh, and he got eight years for kidnapping. She's doing life in prison. That's how out of control gas prices are. See? Right. Yeah, and that's how the Burger King. We that's a corporate system. You want to play the game and uh, give the raises to who they belong. That's a, it's a cutthroat that's business. Right. Right. There, was that's a, there was a murder in Jersey where they found a little girl that was taken away from a carnival or in Perth Amboy. And her sneaker was found, and they and did they ever solve? Did you ever read about oh, that no, one? Oh no, but I remember it. I remember. It. Yeah, it was awful. Well, let's finally. Uh, Forty-five minutes later, it kind of no. lost me. At then the grandma come up dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she come <laughs> up dead? We got the second clip from the man yes. holding girl hostage in oh, wow. dungeon for, about that. for eight years. Yeah, good. What has Natasha told you about what her life was like for that eight years in captivity in the dungeon? He scared her. He told her he had asked for a million dollar ransom, and that he had called me for two years and I would not react at all. He also told her the house was rigged with explosives and if she ran away, something terrible would happen. Natasha hasn't appeared in public yet, but her father told me she seems okay, at least on the surface. If you remember, she has spent eight years in a dungeon. She looks relatively good, but she's very skinny. She looks all right. But you can see there are effects. Hmm. Imagine yeah. all those years you think somebody's dead and then they come back. Yeah. Uh, judge in Alabama. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, uh, Judge. I was just wondering, have you guys uh, ever heard of any, any black serial killers? You yes. know, you never hear yeah, what's his name? Timothy Spencer was one in Virginia. The dude Atlanta. in Atlanta. Atlanta. Uh, Wayne Williams was Wayne definitely Williams. one. And there was another guy killing uh, white girls, I think, in uh, I want to say other state in New York. But yes, Timothy Spencer was like a cross-racial one, which is rare. He was a rapist at first, and they started fucking raping and stro uh, slow strangulation. Mm. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, so there was a bit of I just know the ratio, I guess. You, you normally just hear way more white serial killers and... I don't know why that is, but... Because black people can't afford cars. It's and it's also <laughs> probably statistically so rare. If you have one in a million that are going to behave that way, well, there's a lot less black people than there are white people, so I think the odds right, are you're yeah. just going to get... You know, I think it's probably numerical. Yeah, it's just a, a stat thing. Hey, uh, Justin, Alabama, what's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Good morning to you. Uh, good morning to you. Hey there, man. Hey. Uh, pretty good. Um, I had one. And also, on excuse me, John Mohammed and Lee Malvo. Jesus, how do we forget them? Ah, yeah, the snipers. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, I had a comment. Uh, I heard Jonathan Davis was going to be coming in, or shortly, or maybe he already has. But anyway, I've heard that he actually owns Ted Bundy's old Volkswagen. That is true, you know, and, and I don't know why we didn't know that beforehand. That uh, would have been really cool to talk to him about. Wow. 
He oh owns his... Uh, wow, does he own that? His VW Bug, yeah. The brown one he got busted in? Wow. He Holy. still owns it. That is true. I wonder if we can get him on the... No, he's sleeping. He's sleeping. Now. Wow. I lost great for next time for the phoner. Wish I would have <laughs> Oh, hey, little Jimmy? Yes. Click. Ah, uh, no. sir, what? you are hilarious. Thought I was gonna hang I up. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, man. I appreciate Very it. Very good. I love being on the show. All right, take All right. care, guys. Anthony, you're freaking hilarious too. Oh, oh. you're great. Thank you. <laughs> See, Hope I didn't buy great. that. You, you just wanted to include me. Now you just want to include all this. Now I feel even uh, sad. Uh, hey, hey, you are the uh, wizard behind the curtain. Uh, Everybody that's, knows. That's that. wonderful. That's that's a great uh, compliment. <laughs> I'll go home with that. <laughs> After busting my ass for 20 years, that's, that's <laughs> okay, nice to know. Uh, people still pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Right, yeah, the guy that pushes buttons. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> You're not helping, sir. You're just hurting somebody more and more with every filthy word oh. of your sewer. Have fun watching your cartoons uh, now. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I think I'm crashing, guys. All right, thanks, oh, Jason. Bye-bye. All right, no, you're, you're, you're all right. Thanks, Justin. Bye-bye. All right, here's the final clip. Man holds girl hostage in dungeon for eight years. Bad girl, by the way. Bad girl, yes. What? Who? She misbehaved. There are still questions about how Natasha was treated, including whether she was sexually abused. Yeah. Even her father doesn't seem to know that yet. Are you concerned that during her imprisonment, she was sexually molested? I'm worried, but nothing has been proven yet. The police are still trying to understand this by asking her subtle questions. I just want to make sure I do everything possible to help to make sure she has a happy and worry-free life. There is, after all, not much else a father can do. That's rough. What do you think? Of course he abused her, you dumb trying to get the father to cry reporter. What do you think he did? Argued politics with her for eight years? He taught her yes. karate. Exactly. <laughs> and people are against Megan's Law. That's where that's where you just want to kill the ACLU. Well, it, the ACLU yeah. is irrelevant when it comes to stuff like that yeah. and terrorism. They're irrelevant.